Marco. Yes. Marco. Obama, we're here. Obama. Yes, we're back, everyone. Marco. <laughs> Do you like me? <laughs> Yeehaw, it's bull wrangling time. I got to get the bag. Let's go. Yes, all the sound effects. Billions and billions. <laughs> I hope you guys are all doing good. Make sure you thumbs up the stream. Thumbs up the ting. Click like on the stream and uh, support. Dude, I'm so excited for this uh, stream right now because there is a brand new episode of Building Fortunes Radio. <laughs> Marco, Marco. Let's go. More Marco. Thumbs up the ting. Do you like me? <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeehaw, it's bull wrangling time. I'm so ready. I'm so ready for this, especially after uh, what I said on my last stream where we talked about uh, our two favorite little monkeys, Scott Johnson and Peter Mingles. I am so uh, hyped for whatever they have to contribute to society this time. I know it's going to be good, uh, but make sure you guys click like, click thumbs up so people can be notified that we're live. What up to uh, Tretino? She believed she could. Will, Nina, Sweet Goth, Crypto Foo, Jordan Tupper, Amanda, Rebecca, AH, Megan, Lisa, JW, Alex FPV, Lucy, Tretino. Marco. Marco. Yeah. So. Um, Thanks, Marco. You're welcome. So let's uh, let's let me just get right into it. I I honestly. I was trying to listen to a little bit of it before we went live, um, and I, I heard him mention my aunt calling me during my stream, and I paused it right there. I was like, okay, I need to blind react to this live on the stream because I love when he talks about like my personal life, my family. Like I, I can't wait to see what he's going to say. And then one last other thing. If you want to register for the MLM conference, it's next week. Uh, the link is in the description of this. If you want, It's free to register. And the donation goal says videographer. I'm hiring a videographer when I fly out to the conference to shoot this interview of me and very uh, amazing anti-MLM litigator, Doug Brooks, who today we're going to be talking about Herbalife. He is the one who prosecu prosecuted the class action lawsuit against Herbalife on behalf of a bunch of the Hispanic victims of that scheme which was documented in the documentary Betting on Zero. So we're going to be talking about that documentary today, Herbalife, Doug Brooks. So if you want to support that dono goal, the Streamlabs link is in the chat. Uh, oh, where's the, hold on. I got to get the bag. There you go. If you want to support the Super Chat, the Patreon, there's a new episode of Patreon. Sorry, there's a new episode of Multi-Level Misery dropping tomorrow on Patreon. This is with a gentleman who was in World Financial Group. So more World Financial Group content coming your way. And it'll be out everywhere on Monday. So we're doing a lot of stuff. Marco. We're doing a lot Marco. of stuff. We're doing a lot of stuff. So if you want to support, it's always amazing. We love to see it. Do, 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 da, da, da. So let's just jump right into it. Scott Johnson's radio show on Building Fortunes Radio. Wow. It shouldn't, it shouldn't make me this happy to like watch these guys flounder about. But let's do it. Here we go. I'm going to start it from the jump. Welcome to Building Fortunes Radio. Make sure you check us out at buildingfortunesradio.com. Along with our marketing partners, we're here to help our PM Marketing yes. Network Lead customers build their business yes. and make the world a better place. At Building Fortunes, we know how much your business means to you and I the know. people important to you. So spread the word, tell a friend, join our newsletter, and go make a difference in your world. Nice. Now on to our Watching show while with I your host, lies, Peter Mingle. Hello everyone, Peter Mingles here. You're listening to us on Building Fortunes Radio. It's www.buildingfortunesradio.com for anybody that might be unfamiliar with my voice. My name is Peter Mingles. We started this whole thing. I found out what date. It was actually December 15th of 2012. So that was the day I started this wow. radio show. Probably registered the domain name probably a couple of days before that or whatever. But anyway. So I was 16 when y'all started this. 15 or 16 when y'all started this. I think 15 actually. <laughs> and it... And I have been able to live an entire adult, uh, an entire life. I went through all my teen years and my early, you know, the first half of my 20s. And here I am. It took this long for y'all to actually find somebody who will give you the time of day. Amazing. We've been here on Building Fortunes Radio. For 
Fuck, what did I do? Motherfuck. I clicked away? Sorry, guys. Fuck, I'm an idiot. I'm always stupid Marco after all, y'all. What can I say? Marco! Marco! Welcome to Building Fortunes Radio. Make Does somebody have the actual, what's it called, link for this? The one where you can actually scrub through? Look how not intuitive this is. Look how difficult it is to scrub through. 2012, so that was the day yeah. I started this radio show. December 1978, probably the domain yeah. name probably a couple of days before that or whatever. But anyway, we've been here on Building Fortunes Radio for a super duper long time. <laughs> Um, and you said, do they record this in a submarine? Amazing. Uh, anybody that's been listening into our radio show knows I am a very pro MLM person because my background was in direct sales and I've actually done probably almost everything in this MLM industry. Been a distributor, you know, let's call it a leader, quote unquote. Um, cause I think it's kind of not self serve. It's kind of self-serving if you're calling yourself a leader, but you know, ran a big downline company owner, vendor, supplier, part of the trade organizations, all this sort of stuff. So I'm very much a pro MLM, however, but when done right. So anti MLM. What does it mean? What does it mean when done right? I can already tell Peter's going to be pissed in this episode. I can tell by his tone starting off. Nobody knows Peter Mingle. Nobody knows Peter like me, frankly. Great guy. Big, strong guy, frankly. One of the best. Maybe ever. Uh, I know Peter. I know the little nuance in, nuances in his voice. And the way he's talking already in this intro, he, to me, he may as well be crying because I, I can hear the frustration. I'm, we're going to see it come out, I promise. MLM guy, when done wrong. So when I first started with this industry, way back when, Electrolux was the first time uh, that I learned or was actually, let's call it, involved in an MLM because their direct sales compensation had an MLM to it. So I, and by the way, it helped me become a area vice president. I made more money, like I made stupid amount of money when I was in my young late 20, no late twenties, I guess, as a result of the MLM compensation plan that started with the uh, Electrolux. So I was certainly pro MLM. Undisclosed city funds. Hey, thank you, M Dub. I appreciate that, bro. Appreciate you, big dog. And Charlie wins. Yes, you do. I got to get the bag. Thank you so much for the five super chats. Billions and billions. We left. That whole thing came down what here. Up, started doing some other stuff and then working with other people that do MLM. I was appalled by how badly it's done. Totally, Michael. And Scott the, Johnson the, the way is people, the joker you know, mislead, to my bad The way man. people lie, the way people do a whole bunch of stuff. So I always felt that was a threat to the profession. So I was very anti-MLM. Well, that's really kind of tough because a lot of people in this industry are either one side or the other. So I asked a gentleman named Roger Van Vlissingen to be a guest host on Building Fortunes Radio. And as a result of that radio show, Scott Johnson called me up and he says, you know, I listened to that. There's something a lot of people are missing. And I said, well, that's Scott. And he says, the tools scam associated with MLM. Here we go. The tools and scam, I baby. They I love it. I fired myself three separate times with Amway, uh, not because of the overpriced products, not because of the crappy compensation plan, not because even of the weirdness of the cult-like feature of some of the MLM people. Um, I quit. Take a shot. There was like Take a shot no every time Scott Johnson says tool scam. What up, Dave Vaughn? This is going to be good, Dave. Hey, that most people could make any money, the type of money that they were preaching from stage, without somehow probably benefiting from the profits generated from the tools sales that they were hiding in plain sight from the majority of the people. See, a lot of people are really nice, but they're somewhat naive and they didn't see it. Talk about or me. Or maybe they were trusting and they Let's just wait. didn't see it and they were lied to. So as a result of when Scott Johnson said the tool scam. This is all important, though, because he's explaining why he's pro MLM, even in the face of all of these negative things that he's pointing out. I said, I wonder if he's talking about the same Amway tool scam or system scam as I used to think about it as I was. And I said, do you have a website, Scott? And he said, sure do. It's called StopTheAmwayToolScam.wordpress.com. <laughs> of course. So if you go to StopTheAmwayToolScam.wordpress.com, you'll be able to see that. And uh, he's linked it up to a, another site. He's going to tell you about that in a second. But um, I said, wow, so let's start doing some of these radio shows, Scott, because a lot wow. of people don't know about this. And um, I, I know it's prevalent in Amway, but it kind of spiders off in other companies as well to certain and different and various degrees. So let's do a couple of radio shows. And, you know, we'll see where it goes. And I don't know how much we'll be able to talk about just the tool scam. Well, 
we started to talk about the tool scam, and then we started to talk about a lot of other things related to home-based businesses, affiliate programs, MLM, Ponzi's pyramids, everything from politics to Thumbs up the stream, y'all. Thumbs up the team. Every once in a while, we've spoken about uh, sex trafficking, believe it or not, child sex trafficking. Ah, uh, getting get demonetized. From all different um, places across the world. And uh, tonight, we're here with Scott Johnson on his own radio show. We do this at 8 p.m. Eastern about a lot of time, other things. 7 p.m. Central, when it's darker earlier, when it gets lighter later, like during the summer, I'm usually doing my Sunday chores, like outside, so we might switch to 8.30 or maybe even a little bit later than that, depending on stuff, but for right now, it's darker earlier, so we do it at 8 p.m. Eastern time, so if you hear different times on different radio shows you might listen to, that's... Um, By the way, the not to stir the pot, but... Scott Johnson, I know you watch. I know you're watching this right now live. Let me ask you this: You've been doing this show with uh, Peter now. Sorry, I get you two fools mixed up. You've been doing this show with Peter now for over a decade. Okay, 2012. This is Peter's platform. Peter runs this website, Building Fortunes Radio. He's the one broadcasting everything. That means that you you have some agreement, right? And I'm guessing it's monetary. I'm guessing you pay him. I just want to ask you, Scott Johnson, to consider this question. You don't even have to answer this question to me. I just want you to ask yourself this question. After all this time of Peter doing this shit for you, what justification do you have to not own the infrastructure? Like I upload these streams to YouTube by myself for absolutely free. Why are you paying Peter for 10 years to do this, you know, and you do it once a week for an hour and a half. That's a pretty decent commitment of time. Let's say you're, let's say you pay Peter a hundred dollars a month for, for his services. That would be $25 a week. I think that's a pretty reasonable, uh, you know, suggestion you're paying a hundred dollars a month. Let's say that's 1200 a year. And you've been doing this almost coming up on 11 years. It's 13 grand. Is that, Hey, thank you. Thank you, lady, little lady. Crazy brother. part is that I feel like people think that the tool scam is over, but nope, it's still going. When I left Amway end of 2021, it was still alive and well, it just adapted to modern technology. Totally appreciate that little lazy leopard. That's so true. It's just, I find it hilarious that Scott Johnson goes on and on and on and on. And that's the only thing he cares about. And it's the only thing he cares about because it's what got him. He only cares about himself. He doesn't care about other victims. He doesn't actually care about reforming MLM. He doesn't care about anti-MLM. He only cares about himself and getting sympathy from others and telling his story. That's all he cares about, okay? Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? So yeah, you've been paying, Scott, you've been paying Peter Mingles for so long to do this. Why, bro? Just are you being taken advantage of? From my point of view, you are. But let's continue. Changing it based on the weather and the, all that other sort of good stuff that might might be happening. So I'm going to say thanks, Scott Johnson, for running this show and uh, helping me to make sure I stay on top of whatever's going on in the industry. So thanks for being here on your own radio show. Hey, Peter, thank you. And, and thank you for running the show. I just talked for an hour and a half. You're the it's one so that's awkward. behind they talk to each other on the show like they like they weren't just talking before they hit record. And also they talk to each other on the show as though there's actually people listening, <laughs> like fans. The scenes, recording all this and putting it on your website and all of those kinds of things, nice. plus all the other shows you do during the week. So uh, my hat's off to you for doing that. And, um, yeah, I think we're, we're members of a very small club. You know what I might do, Uriah? Uh, you said you want to hear how the beef started between Marco and these dolts. I might – you know what I might do? I might go dig back through the live stream archives and um, public, make public the live stream that started all of this. I think I'm going to do that, actually. If you guys want that, let me know. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to go back to 2021, find the stream that started it all, and make that one public so you guys can watch it. Because, you know, we're both pro and anti-MLM. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. You're both pro and anti MLM. Made it up. The, literally an oxymoron. Uh, what up, Gabby? What up, Mr. Almighty? What up, CryptoFoo? 
I, I mean, okay, y'all want that? Got you. I'll, somebody will have to remind me, but uh, let's listen here. I'm pretty sure Scott, I'm pretty sure Peter is looking for folks to listen to support his leads generation business. Scott is not paying for this to the best of my knowledge. Okay, I see. Uh, so he just wants to give people a platform, even though no one listens to it, so that he can get more people to his leads business. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, like you say, if it's done right, we're pro MLM. If it's done wrong, we're anti. And it's interesting how both sides, you know, sort of misdiagnose us. You know, the the people that are pro MLM think that we're anti. Thumbs up the, the stream, y'all. Click like. Think that we're pro, and they just can't see I got beyond you, Jamie. that. You know, they have to put you in one of two camps, and and they don't really care about the facts. It's just I'm pro or I'm anti, and that's just as far as their thinking goes. So. <laughs> So it's, it's really interesting how um, we really are pretty much um, alone. I, I, I guess I could think of a couple other you people, are alone. Um, you know, just off the top of my head, like the, the guest we had on here about a month ago, Crystal, I think she really gets it. Um, and I'm planning on having her on again, by the way. <clears throat> I think, I don't know if they are still live. I know Dave posted the link in, in the Discord and said it's live. Discord link in the description, by the way. But I'm not sure. At some point, she's just been real busy. She wants to come back on again, so we'll do that sometime in the future. Um, but yeah, it's it's really interesting how that dynamic. You know, people go to their two sides, and they don't want to listen to any facts. They just want to be in their tribe, you know, as they call it, and they really don't know what the other exactly, tribe thinks. Jennifer. They don't really care um, about the facts and. They just want to be in that group that they're in, and that's about the end of their thinking. So it, it really is quite amazing how all that sort of happens. And, yeah, that's interesting. I think you mentioned for the first time the actual date, December 15th, 2012. I think that was about – I think it was about uh, a week, maybe a little bit less from when <laughs> Bill Ackman did his <laughs> presentation on Herbalife. I believe it was just before – Christmas when he did that it was about a 342 slide presentation that took three or four hours um, and he said hey Herbalife's an illegal pyramid and the stock went way way down um, and then different things happened I won't go through all the details but eventually he had to back out of the deal but recently he was quoted uh, in, a, in a different company that was being investigated by a third company and that third company said, Hey, this, and it, it, I can't remember the name of the company, but it's based in India. And they said, Hey, this is a total scam. And, um, Bill said, Hey, I looked at that analysis and I, I think they're right. I'm coming up you know, here. I think that company in India is a scam. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And, uh, he said, by the way, Herbalife is a, still a scam too. <laughs> So he had to get his he had to get his shot in in about Herbalife uh, <laughs> while he was talking about this other company, and he's been out of it for now what five years I think I think it was twenty eighteen when he finally pulled away from his uh, short position with Herbalife. So it's it's kind of interesting how those things you know go around and and sort of have this life of their own, right? And and so you know particularly for the new listeners. And, and I don't know if you listened to this part of uh, one of Marco's recent videos. Here we go. Um, his live Marco. streams on, on YouTube, Peter. But um, Pete, uh, uh, um, Marco is convinced that we changed the time of this show just so that he could not start his show and play <laughs> us live. You guys, Scott and Peter, you both know that's not true. Like, you know that I listen – when you guys do your show on Saturday, normally I react to it the following Wednesday. So you know that's not true, but go off. And, and, and embarrass us, um, you know, while he does his live stream. He, he, he thinks we're dodging him. And then he said, but I'm going to start earlier. <laughs> so so I don't know if he's actually starting earlier tonight. But he said he would. <laughs> he's sitting um, there he refreshing the page. You know, you know Marco. He's always stupid. Um, he is known as um, always, always Marco stupid. on – YouTube, and we correctly call him always stupid, Marco, because he's really stupid. The guy is just a couple really short things from one of his recent videos. Here we go. Um, as he's doing his live stream, 
his aunt, who also lives in <laughs> Edmonton, Alberta. Here we go. You're about to talk about my family. Let's go. He's about to talk about my aunt calling me. Here we go. Canada. <clears throat> and he has these two young nieces, around 11 and 9 or something like that, uh, years old. And he said he called the 11-year-old recently to wish her a happy birthday. Ah, uh, okay. I see what you mean now. I see what you guys mean. Okay, so this is the one. So this is the one we, we already did react to this one. So here we go. This is the one. This is what I'm looking for. Usually, I like to react to this shit on the Blog Talk Radio website because it's better quality. Um, so they're still live right now. Let's see where they're at right now in the broadcast. And then Enpaz says at 28 minutes in this one is where they talk about me. So let's see if they're, if they're talking about me right now. They're probably talking about me, talking about them, Actually talking about me. If they stop. Right now. Where they're shooting up. Where they're doing the other things, almost attempting committing suicide or okay, doing let's... or even going further, Marco. And then oh. you'll wonder why some people might have a challenge with you being a drug dealer. Ah, Past they're talking about me. <laughs> or future. So back to you, Scott. Ooh, we got to rewind yeah, this once I... it's done. Will I have that option? Because right now I try to click, I can't rewind. You made the point before too, Peter, that, you know, who turned in your son? I did. When, when he... Oh, he was stealing all those things. This is the tea. Was, and probably others, right? It wasn't just you. It was probably, you know, you know, parents of his They're other friends, now. whoever it was. And you turned them in. Guys, now, call into the call show right now. Real love, you know, tough love, I guess is a term. But it's really love because, you know, a, a dad is, is going to love their kids unconditionally even if it makes life hard for them in the short term, right. because it's the right thing to do. Says Marco the guy never who missed out on his mind, children's lives because of Amway. It's the right thing to do. Um, and, and a lot of his commenters are just as stupid as he is. Uh, <laughs> one of his recent videos, just as an example, I mean, I, if I went back, I could find lots of examples, but just as this one example, um, as he was talking about the Customs and Border Patrol I love when he talks about um, the and me notifying them that he should not be entering this country, um, there was three or four comments along the lines of, well, Scott's the one that should be arrested. He's the one that broke the law. He's the one that should go to jail. I mean, how stupid can you be for notifying public safety, you know, government agencies about a crime? They have about a criteria. They have my number blocked. I've called them each 12 billion times. Entering this country and then be called breaking the law and should be arrested and should be put in jail. It, it's just such the opposite of, of logical. It's extremely stupid. But that's an example of the people that follow Marco. Somebody and called the number. Nobody corrected Let's, anybody on those comments hear you live. during the chat. They, they just made the comment, and it just kind of floated out there. Nobody said, oh, that's not really you know, what Scott was doing. It was, you know, Scott was not breaking the law. Nobody pushed back at all on it. Marco didn't pick up on it. Nobody else picked up on it. And so it, it's just so clear that, that not only is Marco always stupid, but his his followers, his goons, his fans <laughs> are also very <laughs> stupid when they just don't understand basic things what like up, that. It's just amazing to me. Um, and and it's, it's just further evidence of why he shouldn't be in this country uh, because – He's going to be around those people that are, you know, really worshiping him in, in some sense and giving him money. I mean, they're giving he he begs for money on every show all, all show chat. long. You know, he he's constantly begging for money. You know, I have to pay for my hotel. I need to pay for my airline. I need to pay for my uh, Uber. I need to pay for, you know, this and that meals, all this other stuff, just so he can come to the undesignated oh. place in Washington D.C. Uh -huh. um, so I mean, the guys out of control and fortunately he attracts people that are just like him so anyway definitely. i'll stop oh. there i could go on and the, the point yes. that i really want to make is, is as much as he's not an expert he's not a guru he's just somebody who shoots off his mouth he doesn't really he doesn't research anything oh, he's pissed if he researched the things about me uh he would find that uh the last thing he'd probably do is call me a fucking idiot but he's just uh, somebody who shoots his mouth off 
and he can do that at a distance because he's far away and he would never do that in front of me. So I realized that stuff, you know, as a, as, as a guy who grew up in New York, okay. a guy who kind of has been around the block a little bit. You're a really bit, tough guy, Peter. Somebody You're really who tough, understands how things tough work. Guy. You know, when people do this sort of stuff, you know, you just look at them and you just you, you waste your time with other people. Thank you, anxieties. Appreciate that. The people that are listening to him and his advice, those are the real victims. Unfortunately, those are the people that are being abused. You guys and are I the don't victims. Mind My victims. Addressing that, and he can continue on with his own town doing his own thing. But there are some people that are, will actually be harmed by his absolute ignorance in many areas, and that's the things that I just want to trying to take the high road now and let him let him build a successful YouTube career. You know, with all the people that want to follow him. But the smart ones, Marco, they leave. I thought my channel you know, was dying, though. Ones, they stay behind and they comment on trolls and they may throw some money at you. And there might be some people that desperately need, you know, just some community to become part of. And maybe that's your place. But when it comes to an MLM expert and uh, all that sort of stuff, you're, you're tainting the brand that I think Bill Keep would want to promote. But when Bill Keep writes the things that he writes or... Robert Fitzpatrick may say the things that he does. Um, we just say, let you know, let, they deserve what they get if they bring Marco on board. So there you go. So Scott, back to you. <laughs> yeah, a good point. Um, it, it, there was another thing that I wanted to kind of bring out. We're kind of getting near the end of the the show time sure. here, I guess. Um, but there's another thing I wanted to kind They're of bring out, a and, and that was uh, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> Who's always stupid? <laughs> Did you have any other comment? Maybe it'll come back to me. Maybe no, you know, we I'm, got I'm not, idiot. But this is the reason why we did this. Most of this radio show is because this is the last one before Marco heads out to wherever he's going to go, and it's probably Washington D.C. because there's FTC people there, and the FTC people aren't going to fly to someplace else, most likely. So it's probably Washington D.C. And it doesn't really matter. The really strange thing, Scott, is why is it such a secret? You know, why wouldn't it be available to a small audience if they wanted to go? So that you two don't show up. And they're doing it for maybe filming purposes and other stuff. <laughs> but um, I did not ask to be on that. If they did ask, I wouldn't, I would not be on that conference the way it's set up. Um, but I would have conversations with anybody who wants to have an open, positive conversation about the challenges. Yes, Kat, you are in my cult. Them. So back to you, Welcome. Scott. Yeah, it just came back to me. One of the comments that Marco was getting during one of his recent videos was 15 seconds some left. Of the people Come on, Scott. That were his fans were saying, "Well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to boycott the conference because somebody that is a presenter at the conference this. did me wrong. They doxed me or whatever. You know, there's all this drama in the background, by the way, if you don't know. Guys, all thumbs the up the stream. MLM hunt, as, as Only half of y'all have. Uh, they're always going at each other. But one of the uh, other complaints was there wasn't enough diversity. So I don't know exactly, you know, what they, they were talking about as far as diversity because they didn't name any specific examples. In case you're wondering what just happened, they're using some sort of software that locks their show to a certain amount of time. And if they go beyond that amount of time, it just cuts them off. That is the caliber of buffoonery we are dealing with here. He didn't even get to finish what he was saying because it cut off. We can't make this shit up. Actually die if they stop where they're shooting up where they're doing the oh fuck okay see now now it's over now i have to uh yeah i'm a diversity hire now i have to refresh it and and probably wait a couple minutes so i can start it from the beginning i'm so excited for this episode please start from the beginning <laughs> i love it exactly joey says they really love talking as if they're so wise and experienced. Meanwhile, their entire lives are represented by an obscure, out-of-date, shitty call-in show no one watches and lack of loving family. It's not even a call-in show. Nobody calls in. It's them calling each other. Let's see if I can play it. It might take a few minutes to, like, process. <laughs> Dude, I'm so, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. So I guess they're starting their show now at 6 p.m. my time. 
I usually go live at 7 p.m. my time, which means if I go live right at 7, they should still have 30 minutes left in each show every Saturday that I can react to. So, But this is the episode where they are reacting to everything that I said on, I believe it was Wednesday's stream, where I talked about the conference. Yes, here we go. It was called The MLM Beef Just Got Bigger. If you haven't seen this stream, this was from Wednesday. Uh, right here. Watch this one after this. Watch it. It's only an hour and a half, and it is dedicated to the reacting to the last episode they did where uh, I talked about how Scott Johnson wrote a letter to the United States like border security telling them not to let me into the country because I'm such a criminal. Please take my money. Thank you, Johnny. You've been brainwashed by me. Marco. Marco. You've been brainwashed by me to give me all your money. Billions and billions. You've been brainwashed by me to suffer. You're broke. You're fucking poor. Because I just want to get the bag. I got to get the bag. So thank you for that, Johnny. I really appreciate that. Hashtag cancel Mooka Bear. Yep. Totally. How are we supposed to take them serious? I know. And Paz says, give it like 10 minutes. No, they don't restart. That's just it. That's how unprofessional their shit is. That's how bad quality their show is. That aside from the actual audio quality, if they go, oh, like, I don't even know of a type of software that you would have this sort of limitation. Like, are they using the light version of boomerpodcast.web or something? Like, basically, you can see it here on the screen. It says an hour 30. Right here. Where is it? I'm, I'm mirrored on my screen. Right here, an hour 30. They set the amount of time that they're going to be live for before they go live, and then they hit play, and it's basically a countdown. And if they're not finished before that countdown, it just cuts them off, which is ridiculous. What if you have more to say? <laughs> it's, like it, it's like in podcasts. I mean, what just happened there was Scott Johnson being like, and look, the most important thing that I can say is That's that's what just happened there, basically. <laughs> Here we go. So yeah, they wrote a they wrote a letter in. Sorry, Scott Johnson wrote a letter where he sent it to literally every single presenter on the conference. This long letter about how I'm such a terrible criminal and all these details that he knows about me and my personal life because he's been watching every single one of my live streams for the past going on three years now, which is, I mean, we're talking hundreds of hours of content. It's insane. This guy is old enough to be my grandpa and he's this obsessed. So exactly Meek. What up Meek? So he wrote a letter into every presenter, uh, to try to get me kicked off the conference because he is mad. He is not on the conference this year. He wrote a letter to Bill Keep where he said, you should have invited the guy with the answer key, me. And I'm speaking as him. He believes he is the guy with the answer key. I'm so excited to rewind this. It says, this episode is being processed and will be ready shortly. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, I can't wait. Oh, boy, I can't wait. In the meantime, there's 190 people watching, but only 130 thumbs ups. Does that make sense? So we got to figure that out. Let me read some of your guys' comments here. I think they're using dial-up. They're using demo version of a software. They probably have maximum 50 megabyte file size, perhaps. Marco needs to get the cult member t-shirts back on the merch store. Yes, I'm going to put those back up. Let me write that down too. Let me write that down too. So I got to put the cult member shirts back on the merch store. Um, and I got to unprivate the original 2021 Scott Johnson, Peter Mingle's Building Fortunes Radio live stream, where I basically, for any of you who want to know the origin of this whole back and forth, this beef, that is the stream where I go over the emails that Scott Johnson sent me back in 2021, in inviting me to be on their show. Uh, and I politely declined because look at it. And he wouldn't take no for an answer. He was like, well, tell me a date. When can you do it? When can you do it? And I was like, oh, I'm busy. Maybe we'll do it down the road. He was like, no, when can you do it? When can you do it? And then uh, 
you know, along with some other stuff about how I must not know who he is and how important he is and the value that he can provide and how I need to have him, you know, I need to have a conversation with him in order to understand MLM, even though my videos had already gotten like, you know, a couple million views cumulatively about MLMs up to that point, my infiltrating a pyramid scheme videos. And uh, after that, I just said, hey, Scott, go fuck yourself. And since then, it was a, it was a string of emails that he sent to me personally attacking me and this epic crusade that is now multiple years long of him and Scott, sorry, of him and Peter dedicating some time to me or in some cases full episodes to me every single week on their Losing Fortunes Radio, uh, whatever you want to call it, podcast. I mean, I don't even know what you call it, but so yeah, I can't wait. And Paz says it's that's probably three streams worth of material. There definitely was three streams because I did the first stream where I talked about that. Then I did a subsequent stream where I went over his debate with Savvy and showed how like how much of a piece of shit he is. And then there was another stream where I think I was just dunking on him. So I'm gonna have to go back and trim those up, or you know, and and we'll figure it out. But I will make those public for you guys. I will. Um. I barely remember my own niece's age. It's giving Eric worry. Hilarious. Yeah, it is. It is scary that he knows so much about my like family and my nieces. It is weird. Somebody asked, "Is this grounds for for defamation?" Yeah, but you know, especially with me being in Canada, like you don't even really have to prove in Canada that somebody defaming you publicly is hurting your business. They're not hurting my business. If anything, the shit that they say makes me more money. Because the, the <laughs> enjoy right your recruitment cue. bonus. See hey, you at SVP. Yes, yes. They're so pissed at that just now. Do you like me? <laughs> I gotta get the thank bag. You. Billions and billions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so s perfect timing with that one. Thank you so much for the dono. If anything, it makes me more money because they talk about how my YouTube channel is going down the toilet, how I'm a broke loser, how I'm always struggling, I'm always poor, I'm probably addicted to drugs, I'm probably selling drugs, you know, they can't decide. Um, I'm always begging for money and so whenever they go on these tirades about how I beg for money, people always just donate more money. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. I think it has refreshed. Let's check it out. Yeah. Welcome to Building Fortunes go. Radio. Make sure you check us out at buildingfortunesradio.com. Along with our marketing partners, we're here to help our PM marketing network lead customers build their businesses and yes. make the world a better place. At Building Fortunes, we know how much your business means to you and the people Thumbs up the stream. To you. So spread 50, the word. 50 Tell of a you still have Join done our it. newsletter and go make it a difference sense. in your world. Now on to our show with your host, Peter Mingle. Yes. Hello, everyone. Peter Mingles here. You're listening to us on Building Fortunes. Thank you, Rain. Peloton. I can, tell, I can tell Peter's pissed on this episode, too. Yo, it's www.buildingfortunesradio.com. For anybody that might still be unfamiliar with my voice, my name is Peter. They give no business advice. There, is, there, is, there has never been one thing I've heard in all my hours of listening to Building Fortunes Radio where they actually talk about building a fortune. They only talk about losing it. Ringles. I started Building Fortunes Radio a long time ago. It was the tail end of 2012 beginning part of 2013 specifically i did it because i wanted to help people that needed a voice in the home-based business arena whether it was direct sales mlm oh, yeah, affiliate the voice marketing of the people. programs anything like that or sometimes people just need to be able to talk so we've been doing this radio show for a super duper long time and uh i did a radio show with a gentleman named roger van vlissingen and roger is spelled r-o-g-i-e-r -E van, van vlissingen spelled it wrong you have to figure that one out but he was writing for Seeking Alpha, which is the website that deals with publicly traded companies, and he was a smart dude. I mean, this guy was writing about a lot of different things, and he was writing specifically about Herbalife, and uh, Vima had just been shut down at that time, so I think even though Vima was not a publicly traded company, he had some comments about MLM. Oh, they talk about me 28 were, minutes yeah. in? Okay, let's go. I, I doubt that they would have been able to hold their tongue that long before talking about me, but I'll take your word on it. Let's check it out law that defines it uh we sort of define it as if you have at least as much being sold to outside customers as you are consuming then that's considered to be adequate thank you denny sales and so it's a 50 50 or better 
you know, going to, to customers. And the way we draw that line is because the FTC has um, settled with a couple companies somewhat recently. Totally, Amanda. It's, it's becoming more and more distant. Amanda people. says, takes a lot of commitment to do a radio show MS-DOS style for a decade for yourself. The longer we do the show, because it was 2016 when both Bema and Herbalife settled with the FTC for their lawsuits. They settled out of court. So unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of uh, you know, good trial information from that case or those cases. Um, but what we do have is the True settlement me. agreements, and they generally settled on 50%. It's a great question. Confused AF says, do they apply an effect to make themselves sound like an old radio show, or is the audio quality just that bad? Believe it or not, it's just that bad. And I've thought about this before. I actually don't think I could. By the way, I'm a trained audio engineer. Like, I've mixed music and like produced music for a living. I used to work at a studio a couple of years back and it's always been a hobby of mine. I've been doing it over 10 years. I actually would have to exert effort to try to make something sound this fucking bad. An iPhone is better quality than this. Even talking on the phone, which is worse quality than like FaceTime audio is usually better than this. So I have no God's honest fucking clue how they make it this bad, but they do. They manage it. Uh, Demas was 51%, and Herbalize was sort of a sliding scale. It went from one-third to two-thirds, so if you kind of go in the middle and, and say, you know, 50%. It is done over a landline, kind of Jim. The, the mark, if you will, um, to be a, a legitimate MLM in the FTC's eyes. And it's a ridiculously low bar when you think about it. There's not a business in the world, a non MLM business, that could stay in business, I believe. Um, if you had half of the people buying the stuff, you know, products and or services, they were connected to the company. I mean, you know, anything. Polsky, I have literally said that I would personally pay for them to have better mics just so that they continue doing, you know, more content about me and it's better quality for my listeners. Literally, I would do that. Walmart to a mom and pop shop on the corner. Okay, y'all told me 28 minutes. It's we're at 29 minutes. What are we saying? There's no way they could stay in business. Calling from County half Joe. Of the stuff they sold was just Black to their berries. own people. <laughs> um, and, and so it's an extremely low bar, but it's one that the FTC has used in settlements and therefore it's kind of the best guidance we have at this point. It could be a much higher Guys, and still be, up the stream. Uh, legitimate in my opinion, but that's that's kind of at least a starting point for us. Uh, to, to think about MLMs that are legitimate or not. Um, now, I know both of us have been challenged on this, this point. In fact, I think you were challenged by uh, Robert Fitzpatrick recently. Here we go. Um, when you were talking to him on the phone, he's, and I want to give you a chance to uh, respond to Here his point. Here we go, yes. I think he made the point, something to the effect of, uh, well, do you know of any MLMs that have that kind of retail sales level? Um, and I, I think you said no. Now there might be one out there we're not aware of, but I, I, you know, I would say no, not that I'm aware of. And I think you gave a similar answer, but I wanted you to be able to respond to, to Robert in, in a fuller form here on the show, uh, and go ahead and, and get your, your piece on that. Absolutely. So I, I'll answer your question first and I'll bring up the other thing about Robert Fitzpatrick. So in context, here's how this happened. Um, Marco Mukaber has been saying publicly that I was sued and fined by, uh, I don't know if it was the SEC, FTC, somebody, but I've been sued and fined was the general term as a result of my activities in MLM. And he quoted Robert Fitzpatrick in the book. Now, I know Robert because I've had him on our Building Fortunes radio show. So if you go to Building Fortunes radio. That's actually untrue. You You guys ambushed. Robert, where you were doing a call that Robert was on a conference with, and he didn't know he was even on your show. He didn't know you guys were broadcasting it. He thought he was just having a phone call. So, nice try, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and debunk that one. When you look for Robert Fitzpatrick, you'll hear maybe one or two of the radio shows that we did. So, I, I consider I have a, at least an acquaintance and cordial relationship with Robert Fitzpatrick. And I know some people reflexes like, well, you should sue the guy. And, you know, 
it's not my style to just go do that, especially if it was a mistake, if it was misquoted, if it was misread, whatever. So I called up Robert, and I said, listen, this is what I heard Marco say. Thank you, Pat. And you guys are going to be doing some MLM conference together. Marco's probably going to repeat it based on what he said he read in your book or what you told him that was in the book. So can you set the record straight? And you, can you tell me where you cited the research? Because you're a researcher. So tell me where you cited the research of me being fined or sued so I can actually go and correct those people because you included that in your book. And um, I made that phone call to him first. And then he didn't call me back because I left him a voicemail. It was 1 o'clock or something like that. And I don't expect everybody to answer the phone first time I call. So in the meantime, I said, well, I guess I could try to figure this out on my own. I probably should anyway. So I'll go by the audiobook version of Ponzinomics. So there's a term Robert Fitzpatrick made up called Ponzinomics. So I bought the audiobook. And because um, I don't read because I have glaucoma, it's hard for me to sit there. Because I can't read, I listen to the audiobook. <laughs> read a book with when you have glaucoma, it's a lot easier for me to hear uh, an audiobook. Uh, or maybe watch a movie. So anyway, so I started to listen to the audiobook, and as I was listening to the audiobook, I found that it was author. I'm sorry, read by the author. So Robert Fitzpatrick read his own audiobook, which was kind of unique and very nice. And I was somewhat impressed with how well it was outlined. And I listened. I don't know, maybe the first few hours as I was doing some other things, and I had a general respect for the way it was done. Um, you know, I have my own differences of opinions in many different areas. But then I came to the one section which referenced me specifically, and I said, well, that's just wrong. What did these guys talk about when Marco stopped doing anti-MLM videos? They talked about the other stuff I was doing. They talked about my music and my other videos and my personal life. That's what they talked about. So when Robert Fitzpatrick called me back, um, I was able to say, I was able, I was able to tell him why I called originally, and he kind of interrupted me and said, you know, grammatically, um, it should have been worded a little bit differently, but, you know, I didn't say that you were fined and sued. And I said, well, that's, I understand maybe your recollection of whatever you think is happening in your own book, but there's nothing grammatical about what you... Thank you, Josh. Appreciate that. ...said in your audio book. Um, and then I was able to play for him what he said in his audio book. And um, that's when he wrote me a nice letter, meaning an email that basically said, you know, I, I just this basically, Robert, you know, you misstated it. Uh, write me something so if anybody ever asks me, I can send them from you using your words the situation that it is wrong. I was not fined and sued. And I said, can you do me a favor also? Uh, present or pre prevent yourself and maybe even Marco some more embarrassing uh, false statements. So basically, this guy, grown ass man, old enough, old enough to have a glaucoma, old enough to be my grandfather, right? Is asking Robert Fitzpatrick, I'm so sorry, Robert, that you got dragged into this, is asking Robert Fitzpatrick, like, like, Peter Mingles is like a little kid who like when your mom says no, you go ask your dad. Peter Mingles is sitting there going, Robert, can you ask Marco not to repeat this on his radio show on YouTube ever again? So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll catch you up on what happened here. Robert Fitzpatrick did call me and said, I just want you to know that uh, Peter Mingles wasn't sued. It's just the wording of it could have been confusing. I said, okay, that's totally fine. Uh, and then he told me more about their conversation where he said that Peter said to Robert, you know, we have more in common than you think. I'm actually anti-MLM when it's done the wrong way. And Robert said to him, well, can you, can you tell me one that was done the right way? And of course, Peter couldn't. So I'm sure Peter's going to tell his side of the story. Let's see what he says. Because now that you'll know. This is how bothered they get. This is how bothered they get. If my channel was, like they said, truly dying and nobody listened to me and I was just an insignificant little speck and whatever, whatever, why would they even – exactly, why would he even bother calling Robert Fitzpatrick to, like, try to talk to me? If nobody listens to me anyways, why do you give a fuck about 
uh, if I said the wrong thing regarding your history with Zeke Rewards, which, by the way, even though you weren't sued, you did still try to defend it. You did still collaborate with the people who literally went to prison because of it. The uh, What's her name? Dawn something or other. Uh, I think her name is. And you deceptively uh, billed her return to the to Building Fortunes Radio as a brief hiatus. Motherfucker, she didn't go on a brief hiatus. She went to jail. Oh, that they're false. When you say them, you're really opening up yourself to other action. So that was the context of yes, they were the conversation. MA. And I had told him that this was a private conversation. I'm not recording it. I, we're just going to have this amongst two people, you know, in a friendly manner. I have no animosity towards him if he wrote it by mistake. Um, if he if there if he didn't write it by mistake, if he meant it to be malicious, I disagree with that. And maybe I'll take it to the next level some other way. But at this point, I was not planning on it. And then we started having a little bit of a conversation about some of the differences and the opinions and my background and some of the other things. We talked about Zeke Rewards. We talked about my direct sales company. And in the closing question, because I had gone through MLM, direct sales, uh, Electrolux and direct sales in the ML marketing spin. We've even spoken about M uh, Electrolux's new company and that it's both a direct sales and an MLM company, and the direct sales company Thank does you, it Tara, right. The MLM Tara. company does it uh, in a problematic way, which would be an interesting case study. And that's when he said to me, do you know anyone that does it right? So we go. that's the background of the conversation. Now, based on the whole conversation and what did you I was say, Peter? Robert Fitzpatrick, and then also knowing full well that if I mention a company's name, he can easily – research something or someone about that company that has done something wrong. You know, the internet is a never forgiving thing. Uh, if, if I mentioned, like I can't even mention like Melaleuca does a lot of things right, which is my firm belief. Melaleuca is not an MLM company. But if I said Melaleuca, well, then all of a sudden now... Melaleuca literally is an MLM. Everybody's going to start tearing down in, into Melaleuca. Every Melaleuca thing that ever was said right or wrong. And then it would make me look incompetent because I mentioned no, that No, Peter. Listen to me, Peter. You make yourself look incompetent, you sweet boy. You know why? Because you are incompetent. If you were my son, I would be ashamed of you. But I'm sure we're going to talk about uh, fatherhood and having fathers and son relationships further on in this episode as we got a little glimpse of before when we were listening to the tail end of it. So. Well, Luca does a lot of things right. So I said, am I going to mention any of the companies that I'm working with right now? Well, that would be pretty false and stupid to mention to a very known anti-MLMer uh, on his way to a conference when I know that if I researched that company that I just said I was working with or I knew that was doing the right thing, I knew that they would be ripped apart by all these anti-MLM people because there's probably a distributor did a video somewhere, a brochure somewhere, remember the internet. So just, just so we're all on the same page, Peter, Peter claims, this is how, I can't even wrap my mind around this. Peter claims the reason that he wouldn't name a company to Robert Fitzpatrick, a company that he believes does it right, because obviously that's the ultimate plight of all MLMs, right? Even the FTC can't seem to name one company that's an MLM company that does things completely legally and legitimately and by the book without uh, you know, deceptive earnings claims and an endless chain recruiting model indicative of a pyramid scheme and on and on and on. Peter is saying he can definitely name one, but the reason he didn't name one is because if he names one, then all these anti-MLM crazy people, creators, are going to go f dig up stuff about that company to find dirt on it and then expose it. But Peter, if, there's, if they're doing it right, then there's nothing to expose, is there? Those exposés would, would fall pretty flat, probably, if there wasn't actually you know, tangible evidence of stuff. It would just be rumors, wouldn't it? I don't deal in rumors. I, I show my sources. I do my research. I play your exact show to show what you're saying. So that is a bullshit excuse. Total horse shit. Doesn't forget. It doesn't forgive. It doesn't forget. So I chose to do the simplest and the easiest thing that I've been taught from all of my experiences 
if you don't say anything, you cannot say anything wrong. So I learned that from Steve Cooper. When the wow. So he basically pled the fifth. If you don't say anything, you, you can't say anything wrong. Well, then maybe you guys should apply that to your entire fucking show and just stop doing this show and embarrassing yourselves. Let's keep going. Attorneys from Electrolux, when I was going to go on the stand for a sexual harassment trial for one of my division managers in one of my states, and I was coached by the attorney on what to do and what not to do, and he said to me, Peter, if you say nothing, you cannot say anything wrong. It writes itself. You were going on trial for the harassment. I'm guessing it wasn't a harassment that was done to one of your people, right? I'm guessing it was perpetrated by one of your people because MLM companies are cults and they do use this type of power over people when it comes to S, you know what I'm saying? So, wow. Let's see. Let's keep going. So when Robert Fitzpatrick asked me, do you know any people that are doing, uh, do any, know any company doing things the right way? At the end of the conversation, when we were just about ready to hang up, I said no. Because I didn't want to get... Because you're a fucking dumbass! That's why, Peter. What you were about... It's not because, bro, this is totally incongruent with the way you carry yourself on every single radio show every single week. If you don't say nothing, you can't say anything wrong. Then then why do you insist on doing this radio show where you guys do nothing but say the wrong shit? It's like so pick and choose. It is so pick and choose of like, you know, do as I say, not as I do. You you make up these little rules for yourself when it suits you, you know? Oh, well, you know, he, the, a wise man long ago told me that, Peter, if you don't say anything, you can't say anything wrong. But then you insist, mind you, that's on, you only apply that when you're going to eat your words and end up saying something that you know in your heart is a falsehood, a lie. When you're gonna, when you, if you were to say, oh, here's an MLM company that does everything right, you know that's not true. Yet, anytime you're not talking about something that can be, you know, falsified or proven false, You'll, t you'll blab all day long on this fucking stupid show. So, you know, if his lawyer told him not to say anything, he was definitely on the wrong side of the case, says Meek. Exactly. Into the rest of it. Now, I really think it was fair for Robert to take that one word answer and then repeat it over to uh, Marco Mukabir and then actually make it like it's a quote that I said out of context. You just said you said that. You Listen, regardless of the order that it was said, regardless of whether you answered the question immediately or at the end of the convo, I'm not lying. I'm not spreading misinformation or telling a, 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 an untruth by saying that Robert asked you, can you name an MLM company that does it right? Your answer was no. That is true. So in context, for those people that understand the nature of the conversation, that's the reason why I said no. I wasn't going to tell him any of the companies I'm working with right now that I think are doing it the right way. I certainly wasn't going to mention Meluca because Meluca, by their own admission, isn't an MLM. And how could a guy that knows MLM say Meluca when Meluca says it's not an MLM? Um, and I was certainly not going to... Guess what, Peter? Every MLM says they're not an MLM. World Financial Group says they're not an MLM. Primerica, right on their website, says we are not a multi-level marketing company. I could show you that right now. I could pull it up. I'm in the midst of my uh, Primerica research. I'm actually done the research. I'm actually structuring the video out and scripting right now. But it's, it's right on their website. We are not a multi-level marketing company. So when you recruit somebody so that you can earn higher commission on the product you sell to them and then they do the same thing and then you get paid overrides on those people too and then those people also recruit and recruit and recruit and recruit. That's not multi-level marketing? I guess I, you know, it, it's, a, it's a crazy world we live in. It used to be that MLM companies would say, we're not a pyramid scheme, we're multi-level marketing. Now people are catching on 
So they're just trying to change definitions yet again. No, 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 we're not multi-level marketing. We're, and on we go. We're direct selling. We're affiliate marketing. We're peer-to-peer -peer sales. We're word of mouth. They'll just find a new fucking thing. So, Peter, you're full of shit. I mention any other company because all you have to do is look on the internet and you'll find some fool distributor that's doing things the wrong way. CBL Marco would be Mooka Bear. And, and I mean, even what he just said there at that last second, you'll find a distributor who's doing something the wrong way is a variation of the bad apples argument that is so, it's like the main crutch of uh, defending an MLM. Oh, well, that was just a bad apple. Even if every single person in an MLM company is proven to be a bad apple, the multi-level marketing industry at large will say that that company was just a bad apple. So the, think about how much of a pyramid the industry itself is, right? A lot of the big MLM companies, they're part of what's called the DSA, the Direct Selling Association, right? This is like the lobbying arm, like the big official government body that represents multi-level marketing. They have, um, you know, they, they are the ones who organize the money basically to lobby politicians and things like that. If you're a part of the DSA, that's like, it's good. You know, you have the machine behind you essentially. So if everybody in a company like Amway, Herbalife, New Skin, these are all companies that are in the DSA, ACN. If one of these companies has representatives that are doing the wrong things, let's take, for example, Nathan in my ACN video. ACN said, oh, no, 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 no. That was just Nathan. Nathan was just a bad apple, and they booted Nathan. They, they decided that it would be easier to just kick Nathan than to try to sue me, which I greatly appreciate. So they booted Nathan. Nathan now works for some insurance company. But Nathan was just one of many people doing the exact same thing. I know that for a fact. It's just that the video got big enough that ACN decided it wasn't worth it. That, you know, the damage is done. Let's just get rid of Nathan. If I was to go on a crusade and release video after video after video after video of all the top 25 people in ACN showing all of them doing the same thing, which they do, okay, if it got to the point where the FTC said, okay, Marco, you've proven that enough of the top leaders in ACN are doing grimy shit, we're going to shut the company down. If that happened, then the Direct Selling Association would just say that ACN was a bad apple. ACN was doing things wrong, but we don't, you know, these other companies don't do that. And on and on and on. You know, I'd be like Pac-Man trying to nibble at the bits of proving one by one by one that each person was up to the same shit. So uh, Peter's excuses here are just totally unfounded and they're bullshit. There's no other word. Well, I chose to not uh, display my level of incompetence and mentioning a name to someone who is probably going to manipulate it. So in my... I thought you just said you have respect for Robert and you're, what, you've had him on your show, but now you're saying he's going to manipulate the truth if you tell him? I mean, come on, bro. Where's the integrity? It's like... Situation. Integrity. I said no. One word. No. And when I said no, in a private conversation, I didn't think it would be taken out of context. But it was. And it was repeated to Marco. It wasn't taken out of context. I don't think, hey, Peter, there's 215 people watching my stream right now. I don't think any of them are, like, confused about what the conversation was between you and Robert. You said you can't, you said no to the question, can you name an MLM company that does it the right way? You said no. What a, we're not missing anything here, bro. Nobody's confused. Nobody is miss, you know, Nobody is twisting the truth. Nobody is twisting your words. Nobody is miscontextualizing anything. And Marco said, I don't think Robert would mind me repeating this, which he probably does now. <laughs> but in reference, uh, Robert Fitzpatrick uh, took that out of context. Um, and that's, that's really unfair because we were just having a private conversation. No, it's not unfair. Words, but I guess that's Robert's thing. So I'll let you respond to that. And well, then you know what? You're talking about it publicly now, so the cat's sort of out of the bag. Officially, let the audience hear what Robert Fitzpatrick wrote in his book and what he said on his audio. So I'll let you comment on what you asked me, and then we'll move on. Yeah, and you know, I've, I've heard Mel and Lucas say before that they're not an MLM, but I, I thought they were. I thought that there's uplines and downlines, and there's bones. Peter, Scott, 
Scott disagreeing with Peter? Is it my birthday? <laughs> I can't wait. This is from the volume of people that you, uh, you know, recruit into the Malaluka business. I, I don't know if that's, you know. Oh, no, Frank Van, Frank Van de Sloot is the owner of the company and will sue almost everyone into oblivion because he's a billionaire um, and, he li and he's mean. So he will sue anyone into oblivion. If they say anything, a billionaire named Vander Sloot. It's like literally, this is literally a cartoon. This guy's, you know, we're talking about Batman villains here. That they say, and I've seen him put people in jail as a result of him suing people into oblivion. So when Frank Vander Sloot says, we're not an MLM, if you want to be sued, call Melaluca an MLM. Melaluca is an MLM. Melaluca is an MLM. Melaluca is a multi-level marketing company. Melaluca is a pyramid scheme. Frank Vandersloot owns a pyramid scheme. Melaluca is a multi-level marketing pyramid scheme. Marco, Marco. you want to be fired or you know unhired or whatever you want to say terminated call Melaluca an MLM so Melaluca is not an MLM but anybody that ever hears about it says wait a minute there's an upline there's a downline there's a matrix so wait you're not really explaining how it's not an MLM you're just saying that if someone calls it an MLM their CEO will sue somebody to try to control the narrative which is only actually more evidence that it is an MLM because no legitimate business would do that. Only cults do that. There's a, this, there's a, that. There's a car bonus, there's a this, there's a that. They're going to say it looks like an MLM, it walks like an MLM, it looks like an MLM, it must be an MLM. There's lots of people that would consider Melaluca to be an MLM. And by the way, Kevin Grimes, who was one of the attorneys that was also in Zeke Rewards, who was fined by Zeke Rewards, was one of the uh, attorneys for Melaluca, and he could probably explain it better than anybody else, but the reality. Are you listening to this? Yeah, the lawyer who defended Zeke Rewards, a company that was legitimately a, pure, a Ponzi scheme where people went to prison for their involvement, he could probably explain better than I could why Melaluca is not an MLM. This shit, the, it literally goes over their own heads. The words that come out of their mouth, they don't even see the irony. Is, is that everybody who is uneducated quote unquote, would refer to Melaluca as an MLM, but Melaluca does not refer themselves to an MLM because Frank Van der Sloot says so. And he's a billionaire who'll sue your ass off. That doesn't prove anyone wrong. Because he, cause he's an asshole billionaire and who will sue anyone's ass off makes the company not an, not an MLM. All right. Yeah, to me, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not intimidated by Van der Sloot or anybody else. I mean, Amway sued me. Uh, over a decade ago and, and lost big time. So if Vandersloot gets this message, hey, Vandersloot, if there's an upline and a downline, you get paid a bonus for people that you recruit into Valaluca. <laughs> and I'll, I'll edit that out. I'll edit that out. I'm only kidding. Wow. It's the definition of an LM. Uh, you know, I don't care who denies it. It's what is your business model? Get him, Scott Johnson! <laughs> <laughs> Do you like me? <laughs> no way Scott Johnson is... Scott Johnson's spitting right now. Go ahead, Scott. We love to see it. Don't let Peter intimidate you. Don't let Peter and uh, what's his name, Vandersloot, intimidate you. Tell him, Scott. If it's an MLM, it's an MLM. And, and no matter how rich you are, if you want to deny it... Yeah. If, if the... Mistakenly Mindset says, okay, well, the sun is made of cheese because Jeff Bezos says so. The facts don't hold up, then the facts don't hold up. So, you know, that's... That's where I come from. I, I, I'm not intimidated by anybody. Even Marco. He's got a way. Uh, he's got, I know, Marco. But, he's, but Van der Sloot has a way of explaining it. Even but, Marco. But let me just stick up for Mel Luca for a second. I'm honored to be included in the same breath as asshole billionaire Frank Van der Sloot. Those are their words. Um, I'm honored to. I'm not, I'm not afraid of anyone. Even Marco. Like, I'm the big bad boogeyman, because I am. Mel Luca is a. They're probably a. W. Scott, extremely rare. <laughs> They are very well known. They're very highly respected. They run a really good business. I mean, when it comes to 
customer service and product development and handling their distributors and running a tight ship and compliance issues. I mean, it is one of the best examples you could ever find. Now he's So there's the answer that he wouldn't give Robert Fitzpatrick. Mela Luca is the company that Peter Mingles views as totally, you know, as doing it good. You know, they're doing it great. Tyrant. I mean, anybody that's ever worked with him before knows he's a tyrant to work for. When you are a distributor with Mel Luca, and if you get into a leadership position, you might as well be married to the mob. I mean, the reality is, is you have picked your, you are married to that mob, and you ain't going anywhere else. Because if you even think about it, he's going to fire your ass faster than you've ever seen before. He's terminated more people for kind of uh, sending out the wrong email or developing their own tools or whatever. So he's very protective. So I'm going to say he's overprotective in certain degrees, but he's very protective. But I didn't want to mention Melaleuca to Robert Fitzpatrick because then you got to get into this whole conversation. Is it MLM? Is it not MLM? Blah, 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 blah. So that one wasn't going to be coming out of my mouth. One of my own companies that I work with now aren't going to come out of my mouth because that would be foolish. That's because then that lets all the anti-MLM trolls – go out there and just have a field day picking on distributors. And I wasn't going to do that to one of our customers. And then anybody else who just said, you know what, I'm going to well, go you said it now, uh, Peter. So if any of you guys watching out there wants to go do a video on Mela Luca, now's the time. Back on my old advice that I learned a long time ago, and I'll repeat it because, Marco, when you're sitting down in a courtroom, this is your friendly advice. You can't say anything wrong when you don't say anything but you open up your mouth and you reveal your stupidity to most people, so you're not going to heed this advice. So that's why I just said a one-word answer, no, which, again, <laughs> could be repetitious for taken out of context. But moving on, um, anything else? I want to be able to play the text-to-speech version of Robert Fitzpatrick's book so we can let our Building Fortunes Radio listening audience see. Wait, text-to-speech? Don't you just mean the audio book? If Robert Fitzpatrick said that I was fined and sued. So whenever you're ready. Oh, well, they're going to play it through the Yeah, phone. go ahead, Peter. It's going to be even worse quality. Okay. So this is a text-to-speech software reading oh my God. of Robert Fitzpatrick's book. It's a book called no. Ponzinomics. No way they're actually about to play a, like a Microsoft Sam. I'm in one of the – I don't remember the name of the chapter. It begins with the word legal, I think. Exactly, and Paz. He's basically just saying, say less, but making it sound smart. Um, but it's towards the tail end of the book. And my name was mentioned one time in this one instance, and I heard it on the audio book. I'm going to play the audio book after we're done with this, but I want you to hear Why not just what play is the audio book in the written book, and it's text-to-speech. So if some of the words are not pronounced right or whatever, it's because it's a computer – reading words, and I added a few, not words to his book, but I added a few words in context just for those people listening in. So I'll be quiet. Here we go. Directly from the book Ponzi Nomics, <laughs> Robert Fitzpatrick and actor Kelly Prince the following that Petra Mingles was fined and sued in the Zeke Rewards case. Robert believes that this could have been written grammatically better. Oh. Listen for yourself. Is it a grammatical error? or just a false statement that needs to be corrected. This is what Fitzpatrick wrote. At Berks's criminal trial, high-profile MLM stalwarts no testified way. or were cited for their professional contributions to Zeke. For their no industry activities way. on behalf of Zeke, of the type they provided to many other MLMs, several were sued and fined. Among them were lead generator and trainer show? Peter Mingles and the ubiquitous MLM promoter, wow. Troy Dooley. Once again, this is what Fitzpatrick wrote. At Berks's criminal trial, high-profile MLM stalwarts testified or were cited for their professional contributions to Zeke, for their industry activities on behalf of Zeke, I can't of the believe, type they I provided to many this. other MLMs, several were sued and fined. Among them were leads generator and trainer Peter Mingles and the ubiquitous MLM promoter, Troy Dooley. The third time nails it. Here is the part of the statement where Fitzpatrick wrote. Several were sued and fined. <laughs> Among up. them were leads generator and trainer Peter Mingles. Wow. Robert Fitzpatrick did the right thing and issued a statement correcting this mistake. 
The next time you have the opportunity to ask Rupert Fitzpatrick, you may ask him in person. It was not a grammatical error. It was a false statement. In fairness, a regular person may have made a mistake. Did a researcher, and an industry expert make a mistake like this with all the other research he put on that page? Okay, so that was the text to speech reading the quotes directly from the book. So that's what he was saying was, well, you know, grammatically speaking, maybe it was, uh, could have been made a little bit clearer. No, Robert Fitzpatrick. Grammatically speaking, it said exactly what it said. So that's why I asked him for the correction, and he gladly did that. Play now him using his own words in his audiobook. Here we go. I profile MLM stalwarts. Testified or were some. Oh shit, I'm sorry, I was muted. Woo! <laughs> I was like, I, I said, how could it be? How is it possible that the uh, Microsoft Sam is better quality than what they have? Uh, and then also I said, uh, I read Enpaz's comment where it said, I'm sorry, Hal, I can't do that. Oh, no, this is not a dono. Hilarious. It was so perfect. So perfect. Somebody said the pacer test is a test, the fitness test designed to. I love it. Uh, to be fair, in my defense, I haven't accidentally muted myself in a long time. Marco. Marco. I actually haven't done that in a long time. So I'm going to give myself props for that. I had to mute it at one point because I was laughing too hard. But uh, we're back. We're back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Always muted, Marco. Yeah, always, <laughs> always stupid. Always muted. Totally. Totally. Trey Tino. Okay, sorry about that, guys. We're back. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I had the mic muted. Okay, so... Um, this is now, now they're playing the audio of Robert Fitzpatrick through a phone or through the computer of the audiobook of Ponzionomics into the phone back out to Building Fortunes Radio. So let's see. Yeah, you kicked your own ass, totally. Thank you for their professional contribution. They're going to talk about Marco's mic being muted on the next show, 100%. To Zeke for their industry activities on behalf of Zeke of the type they provided to many other MLMs. Several were sued and fined. Among them were leads generator and trainer Peter Mingles and the ubiquitous MLM promoter Troy Dooley. So if you kind of match them up, you'll see that what was in writing is also what was on the audio. But for those people that just like to hear it one more time, here we go. Oh, wow. profile we heard it. MLM stalwarts testified or were cited for their professional contributions to Zeke for their industry activities on behalf of Zeke of the type they provided to many other MLMs, several were sued and fined. Among them were leads generator and trainer Peter Mingles and the ubiquitous MLM promoter Troy Dooley. Okay. So for all those people that listen to Marco and maybe even listen to Robert Fitzpatrick, who said there was a grammatical error, I would have a really firm disagreement with that and anybody reasonable i would also say the same thing he falsely stated that i was fined and sued so again i just want to set the record straight for the legal reasons as well because i am not opposed to suing people that are going to try to damage my reputation so i'll just leave it at that we're doing it before the mlm conference now there's one other thing scott i'll let you comment on that so what was the point of the whole digital shit microsoft sam text-to-speech shit, if you could have just played the audiobook audio, which you did end up doing anyways. I want to bring one other thing up relative to these these issues. So back to you. If you want to comment on yes. this, or I'll keep going. Yeah, no, a couple things I'd like to comment on. Number one is if you got that wrong, you really have to question everything else in this book, um, this Ponzionomics. And I bought the book, by the way, and I was following you um, word for word reading it. Now, I, I bought a used book because I don't believe in putting a penny in Robert Fitzpatrick's uh, pockets. Um, wow. But it really does call the question as you're reading this book, if he got that wrong, what else did he get wrong? 
Um, you know, if he had, had said this person was born in this city, you know, what's the harm of getting the wrong city? But when you say somebody committed a crime and they were fined and sued and they weren't, that's a very critical accusation of, of criminal activity. And that's a lot different than getting the city of somebody was born in. So that that's, you know, one comment. The, the other thing Amazing is analogy. this chapter is actually titled Crime, Blame, and Punishment. Um, that's the, the chapter that you just read from. Um, and so, you know, the whole theme of this yeah, what chapter reputation. is – to that title of crime, blame, and punishment. And, and he, he just got it totally wrong by saying that you were fined and sued. And you heard it in his own words. I mean, he did the audio book, his voice himself. So, And I've got the book right here. And, and I'm tracking along with uh, your recordings, Peter, and it's word for word. It's exact. So I'd, there's, there's nothing. I'd love, any, you, I'd love any English teacher to be able to explain to me how this was grammatically Maybe give him a, give me the opportunity or the explanation of how this was grammatically maybe could have been said any better. Like it was uh, like it, it, he was trying to wiggle out of saying what he said and writing what he wrote by saying, well, grammatically, you could read it this way. And the answer is, no, you can't. So I kind of stopped him when he was going down that trail. I didn't want to embarrass himself. You know, it was a mistake or it wasn't. Well, then you know what you should do, Peter? You should sue Robert Fitzpatrick or or, you know. Get him to change the book. Get him for all future prints of the book to rewrite that sentence or re-record that section of the audiobook. That's what you should do if you really have a big problem with it. Because you talk about suing me, you know, you've talked about it enough. And I don't see why you wouldn't sue Robert Fitzpatrick. I mean, that book is that book has been spread far and wide. That's like a good, you know, it's a successful book, Ponzionomics. I've promoted it. Basically, every anti-MLM creator has promoted Robert Fitzpatrick and his work. So, I mean, a lot of people have read that. A, re a lot of people have read your name. As a matter of fact, aside from my YouTube channel, your name appearing in Ponzionomics is, you know, those are the two biggest sources of how anyone has ever heard the name Peter Mangles. So, you know, let's see. And either way, I just don't need to say it again. And by the way, just so you know, for, for those people that don't know this, I used to be a part owner of a network marketing company called Smart Networker. We wound used up to be. tangling with Kevin Lehman, who ran ProStep. Troy Dooley, if he was here, would tell you that. Because we sued Kevin Lehman and won. And one of the things that I sued Kevin Lehman for was because he was starting rumors about me and his company. And we shut him up. And we won, and I got a check on my desk that I never cashed from Jerry Nira, his attorney. We took him to – it was an arbitration where we won. Uh, so I'm very familiar with the whole entire process. We took him to arbitration, and we won. I didn't need to claim damages because I couldn't. Uh, my business was thriving. I didn't want to open my books to you know the world, didn't need to. Um, so I have a check sitting right here that's affectionately framed. Such a huge red flag. You you won a lawsuit, but you didn't want to uh, cash the check because you didn't want to open your books. What kind of legitimate company has an issue opening their books? You know, For $1 from Jerry Nira, who was the uh, attorney for Kevin Lehman from ProStep, when we won our arbitration against ProStep. Oh, wait, you only won a dollar? Never mind. So, you know, I'm not opposed to spending $70,000 on legal fees for my reputation. So funny, Uriah, you called it. But in the Kevin Lehman issue, it was worth it. Um, in this issue, it's two words in one book that many people have never read. And it's two, like my name mentioned one time. And if they stop saying it, then it's done. I know some people might still quote him, whatever, you know, as a person of a whatever career doing this sort of stuff you're going to run across complete idiots anywhere you go so i'm not really worried about guys thumbs up the stream like 50 of y'all or something 40 of y'all haven't clicked like do it up and i'm just worried what up bam about the perpetuation and knowing that the author of the book knows that it's not true and people that are quoting the author of the book know that it's not true and i'll leave it at that congrats so peter Loudly crying, loudly crying, loudly crying. I heard Primerica's stock was on the rise, BTW. <laughs> Thank you, Shreya Smith. Appreciate that. Yeah, good points. And I'll, I'll hand it back to you. That's, that's uh, very well.
so so one of the things that Marco, I'm going to swing this over to Marco for one second if you're yes. listening in. Marco, I kind of mentioned a little bit earlier that, you know, you basically expose your stupidity every time you open up your mouth. Sometimes you say things that I will agree with. You know, when we're talking about stuff, you might be mentioning Eric Worre or might be mentioning... What is going on tonight? Am I in the motherfucking Twilight Zone? Scott disagreeing with Peter? Peter agreeing with me? Have I woken up in an alternate timeline? I, I gotta hear this. Some other stuff. There's some stuff that we said from the very beginning we agree with. And then you Is this the beginning of the of the um the allyship arc, the burying the hatchet arc, where they're trying to, is Peter gonna try to be my, like befriend me now? Ooh, this is crazy. Just say stupid stuff. Well, one of the stupid stuffs that you've said. One of the stupid stuffs that you've said. A five-year-old. One of the stupid stuffs is that you really, even when you, even if you, when you talk about Multi-level marketing, even when you say that thing about how what the, that stupid stuffs, even when you say that they are bad, but they are not. We, Peter Mingles and Scott Johnson are doing everything we possibly can to stop you from speaking at the MLM conference. So true. So if you go to, and I'm going to give a little blog to uh, Bill Keep and the conference that he runs, MLM Conf. 2023.org if you sign up if you still can you can go witness this whole event i don't necessarily need you to not speak so let me just say this more clearly <laughs> uh, this is my finger this is scott this is scott johnson and peter mingles just wrapped right around it <laughs> grammatically speaking i would love marco mukabear to speak at the MLM conference in 2023. Well, I am. I, now they're changing it. I want him to speak. I bet you he's going to say, I want him to speak so we can show how stupid he is. <laughs> That's what I want. You know, a couple days ago, they were sending emails to everybody trying to get me taken off the conference, trying to get the border security to kick me out and not let me in the country. So we'll see where this is going to go. And I hope he takes pictures and interviews Doug Brooks, an MLM attorney, uh, Bill Keep, uh, uh, the uh, professor that's kind of running it, Robert Fitzpatrick, of course, all the FTC representatives, many of the MLM pun bots that are the anti-MLMers or anybody else that you might see, because those pictures are worth their weight in gold by the association of such a stupid person as Marco Mukabear. Oh, tricky, tricky dog, clever. So the, now the reason I see. So here, this is the angle he's going for now. He's trying to convince everybody, Bill Keep, Robert Fitzpatrick, Doug Brooks, et cetera, et cetera, that if they associate with me, it's going to be such a bad look for them that they're going to have no choice but to reconsider. <laughs> Peter, everybody already saw the emails that you and Scott, well, I'm sure you obviously had a hand in them, but Scott was the one who sent them in. You just were too scared to put your name on it, I'm guessing. Everybody already saw it. Everybody's ignored it. People are happy to have me there. I'm excited to go meet and shake hands and smile and hug people. It's going to be amazing. You just wait and see. I love you. Like a completely incompetent, person relative to many of the things that he says about MLM. So I want him to speak at the MLM conference. So Marco, you're wrong again. I would love you to speak at that conference because the best part about that is you're not even on the social media conference. You're being You're right. I'm not on the social media section, which is actually, you know, I don't know why they chose to do it this way, but They've given, I've been given even more credibility because I'm on a panel with Doug Brooks, Paul Hanna, director, deputy director of the Consu Co Competition and Consumer Protection Commission of Ireland, Jason Jones, assistant attorney general, District of Columbia, Stephen Barnett, a doctor, you see MD, 
Consumer Advocate, and Quack Watch. So I'm all right with that, actually. I'm all right with that. Marco. Marco. All right, let's keep going. And tied into other people with other names, which is harder to delete. And listening to you speak about MLM or anti-MLM reveals your complete ignorance of this topic. So I want you to speak. So you show and display to the world how you have earned always stupid Marco. <laughs> so Scott, I just had to say that because I've heard him say that so much, so many times. Like we're like we, like me and you, were trying to stop him from speaking. I am not. I hope he speaks. I hope he speaks for a long time. And, and I hope you take a lot of pictures, Marco. Hope you post those all over the place because they're going to be like Jeffrey Epstein pictures <laughs> relative to these people. <laughs> they wish they would have never taken those, wish they were never on that flight, if you will. So back to you, Scott. I love it. Yes. Yeah, I, I don't mind Marco being on the uh, panel either. I just don't want him in this country. <laughs> That's my <laughs> Zoom. You didn't have an issue with me being in the country last January or in this, this past October, I think, was when I came. Yeah, this past October when I was in Napa chilling for the weekend. So what's up? You know, and, and call in from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Great. Display your ignorance, Marco. I'm all for it. I just don't believe he belongs in this country. And the reason for that is because he wow. is a known and he made his own video stating very, very clearly that he was a cocaine dealer for, I think, about two or three years. It and goes up every time. Every time he talks about it. First, I was a cocaine dealer for uh, a few months. Then it was a year. Now it's two or three years. So just we're following along here. And I'm still doing it, by the way, uh, according to them. I'm still selling and I'm still I'm actually using it as well. So, you know, let's let's see. I'm sure in this I'm sure in this episode maybe I'll start doing meth. I don't know. And because of that, he does not have a right to enter this country. And when I wrote an email to most of the attendees, he says I, I wrote an email to all the attendees at the conference. Uh, when I say attendees, I mean the presenters. Well, that's almost totally true. Um, there was a couple of people I couldn't find their emails, and so I did not send it to everybody. But I did send it to everybody I could find, um, you know, including Bill Keep and the two FTC attorneys that are going to be there, and, and several others. Um, and and so my point was to basically warn them that this guy does not belong in this country. Uh, he's a cocaine dealer, and if, if you uh, would like, Peter, I can read this email that that Marco kind of read this past week, but he really passed over some of the really important I did read it. Okay, let's hear what he, let's hear how he says it. Forgive me. Parts. Um unless you want to make another point, I'll go ahead and read that email. Nope. You're good to go. I'll, I'm going to follow up on the drug dealing stuff in a second, but yeah, go. I'll let you have your your time with this. So, um here's here's the email. Um this is addressed again to all the presenters at the conference the, of emails I could find. And obviously one of them sent it to Marco, and that's how he was able to read it on his show earlier this week. So here it goes. Marco is a scheduled presenter on the upcoming, and in, in uh, parentheses, anti-MLM conference, because it's really called MLM C-O-N-F for conference, um, 2023.org, like you mentioned earlier. Um, but it's really an anti-MLM conference, and it's been held for, this will be the third year. Um, and I'll go on with the email here. As a self-described cocaine dealer, and I give the YouTube link, which um, Marco keeps taking it down. Uh, and, and I also have to make another comment here, too, is um, Marco has taken down pretty much all of his previous content, with the exception of his anti-MLM videos and his very recent live shows but for the past three years he's been making all kinds of listening you know, to the stream while at the gym with the og cap usd merch oh wow with the with the cap usd merch thank you so much laura that's amazing wow thank you so much i really appreciate that that's amazing i gotta get the bag yeah let's continue live shows and other i got you bad uh, dog content he's taking it all down um but most of that came down very recently this video that I reference here 
it's a two and a half hour video where he just flat out says, yeah, my best friend, Philip, um, you know, got caught dealing cocaine and, um, I did the same thing. Um, it, it's been, that was taken down shortly after it was made. And that was, I think about a year or so ago. So this is a video that Marco obviously is not very proud of, but it is his voice on video saying that he was a cocaine dealer and still might be. I mean, we know that he's very desperate financially, and that was how he got mixed up, according to him, uh, in cocaine dealing originally. So it's only logical that he still might be dealing cocaine. We don't know. Um, But he did take down this particular video a long time ago, whereas all of the other videos were taken down very recently. So that just shows you how proud he was of this video. And, and he started thinking about, gee, this isn't a very good look. So anyway, let me, let me just move on. Cause I just wanted to point that out as far as how unique this video is. Um, it says Marco took down the original video because he realized it's not a good look, but not before someone made a copy of it. There are several other troubling items that Marco discusses in the above video as well. Um, And and you'll just have to see the video to see all those different things. Uh, Next paragraph, drug dealers are responsible for ruining people's lives, relationships, finances, damaging careers, causing their addicts to commit theft and other crimes to support their addictions. They're not okay, overdose, Comics Bay. Overdose, not death, okay, Comics Bay. committing murders, etc. In short, cocaine drug dealers are stone-cold killers, but not the usual killers out for revenge, losing control in a fit of rage, etc., but killers for the almighty dollar. In Marco's case, the Canadian dollar. He lives in. Ed- he thought he was spitting such hard bars with this the whole time. It's in Alberta, Canada. Next paragraph. And this is my uh, my my ode to um, um, the, what was his name? I, I'm trying to think of his name now. Howard Cosell. Howard Cosell used this little term. <laughs> it's kind of been my favorite. LOL me. There is a venerable plethora of other crimes Marco has bragged about on his YouTube channel which not only reveal his character, or more accurately, lack thereof, but public display uh, but public display of these crimes encourages his self-described goons in, in quotation marks, and in parentheses, Marco's name for his fans, in his self-described cult, and again, parentheses, Marco uses that word repeatedly in his videos, to commit similar crimes. These crimes include, but are not limited, to potentially scamming TELUS, a Canadian telephone company, when he called someone at 1 a.m. local time, which happens to be you, Peter. We, we all know that, because <laughs> uh, he uh, had that video online when he called you on his show Actually, live. Actually, guys, I ran, and a, you answered. I ran a cocaine MLM where people had to uh, buy the cocaine from me, and then they had to use it. But then when they sold it, they only got like a 1% commission unless they recruited other people to their downline to sell Coke. But then those were cutting into the actual Coke sales. So people were just getting paid to recruit. So I shut it down. I was like, this doesn't work. Um, I'll move on with the email here. And pretended to be a panda. My dad had a 71 venerable plethora, a great car. (laughs) Another person before revealing who he really was and insulting them then stating he may contact TELUS. Great question. Did any of the people really uh, actually respond, says Jen? No, nobody responded. Nobody responded. And claim a... They, they, these guys are notorious. They, they're infamous, okay? Nope. Everybody knows them as the two little monkeys, you know, little mosquitoes. Nobody gives them any attention. They're, they're worthless. Only I do it because it's funny. Younger relative dialed some random number, and it went unnoticed for a period of time. Now, I happen to know, Peter... Uh, that you have that video where where he was actually saying that from his live show. So I'll move on with the email. Um, we have, a, just, as, just as a side note, many of his videos have been saved and stored. So they'll, yes. they'll, they yes. will be reproduced at the appropriate times and still are online. So back to you, Scott. Yeah, this is the tip of the iceberg. I, I do think it's the tip in that, 
being a cocaine dealer, I think, is the worst thing he's done. At least the worst thing he's done that he's talked about. I'm going to give him a point every time they get something right. Yes, uh, I did have a long-distance TELUS bill one time that I wasn't aware of. Like, I thought I had international calling, and I guess I didn't. So I called TELUS to ask them to not uh, charge me, like, to make a one-time exception. That's what they're referring to. And, yeah, TELUS did revoke the charge. So I'll give you that one. Wow. Um, but there's a lot of other stuff here, too, that points to his character. Um, so it's not just like a one-off. That, that's my point. As he has described on his video, Marco has also repeatedly harassed. Thank you, Rachel. Yes, I will do that. Fast by making unwanted telephone calls as recently as a few days ago. The same person mentioned above, as well as me, at various times, including 3 a.m. local time. Marco has bragged about scamming a number of businesses, including but not limited to uh, Jet West. It should be West Jet. Um, Marco corrected me on that on his video. Thank you, Marco. You <laughs> That's a drop, you guys. Hold on. Thanks, Marco. Now we have the Dominic Izzo. Thanks, Marco. And the Scott Johnson. Thank you, Marco. Hold on. I got to go back. As well as me at various times, including 3 a.m. local time. Marco has bragged about scamming a number of businesses, including but not limited to uh, Jet West. It should be West Jet. Um, Marco corrected me on that on his video. Thank you, Marco. Um, and then in parentheses, sneaking into the airline's exclusive club area at major airports and sneaking into first-class seating. Um, and then the next uh, part is Starbucks. This is also true as well. Complain. Hold on. This is also true as well. I want to give him another point here. Uh, at airports, they have the uh, like executive lounges where you can go sit if you're like a if you have the certain credit card or if you're a member of that airline, you have the aeroplan, whatever it is. Um, those lounges usually have a person sitting there who checks you in, makes sure you have the thing. Or if you're just a member of the public or you're, you're flying with another airline that doesn't, uh, isn't connected to that lounge, like for example in Canada, usually it's the Air Canada Lounge. Air Canada is the airline. So if you're flying, if you're flying WestJet, Typically, unless you have the Air Canada credit card or MasterCard, whatever, you won't get access to the lounge. So they'll just charge you. It's usually like $50 to uh, get the wristband or the stamp or the code or whatever it is to get access to the lounge. A lot of times, there's nobody there uh, at the front, and a or a lot of the times, they just aren't paying attention or they're busy or whatever. So there have been times where, as a little airport hack, I just walk in and sit down. Yes, I've done that. I've I've tech I've done this before. I'm a terrible criminal. I've walked in and not paid for the airport VIP lounge and sat down in a more comfortable seat than I would have sat in out in the uh, general like gate area for my flight. I have sat uh, and used the Wi-Fi and used the chargers and uh, in the lounge without paying. I have. It's true. You've got me. So I'm gonna give him a point for that about a drink not being made to Marco's liking and then getting a larger size as a replacement. Oh, yes. Yeah, so now he's talking about now in the same letter where he's explaining why I'm a terrible criminal who shouldn't be allowed into the country. He's also explaining how I'm a scammer who has scammed all these companies. WestJet, uh, TELUS, Starbucks. I'll give him a Starbucks point, too. It's true. I told the story. I've told many stories, uh, not many, but multiple stories of going to Starbucks and they made my drink wrong. So I went to ask them for a replacement, and they gave me a new drink. This is the scamming that Scott Johnson is referring to here. This is the scamming that I have done. So let's let him keep going here. Um, Papa John's Pizza. Oh, yes. Continuous Papa John's Pizza. Yeah, let's listen to this one. Complaining about pizza and getting it. Wow, Marco, I never knew you were capable of this. Hilarious. Getting a free pizza every other order. This is what he talked about in his video is – he would just complain about something, and they say, oh, sorry, Marco, next one's free. He says, well, that's, that, that's how you should be treating me. And then he gets the free one, and then the next one is the orders. Again, he complains so he can get another free pizza. That's <laughs> YouTube apology video when Tell us and WestJet will never recover from that. Yeah, my apology video is coming soon. I might do it on the next stream, actually. It's going to be very serious. I'm going to be very heartfelt and sad in it. Talk about a lapse in my judgment. 
I know, Uriah, it is policy at Starbucks, but what can you do? Uh, and then Papa John's, yes, this is also true. Oh, no. It's also true. I've complained about uh, pizza before, being cold, whatever, at uh, Papa John's, and so they gave me a discount next time or they gave me a free pizza next time. I have done this, I think, two or three times uh, back in 20... It's been a couple of years since I did it, 2019, 2020. So, yeah, this is an Avengers-level threat that we're talking about. That's Marco. Um, grocery stores, um, in parentheses, various out-of-date items that he purchased weeks before that Marco returned, claiming yes. the store sold him. And this is one that I still do, actually, is if I buy something from the grocery store, and then, like, recently this happened, right? I bought groceries on uh, Wednesday. Thursday, I got sick, and so I wasn't really eating. I, was, I didn't have the energy to, like, make food, so uh, I was just eating, like, you know, whatever, like stuff to get me by, fruits and vegetables, stuff that required very little prep time. By the time I got better, some of the bread that I had purchased a week before had hit the expiry date. It was unopened. It was like a sealed bag. So instead of throwing it in the garbage, I went back to the grocery store where, mind you, they throw bread away every single day by the, you know, bin full. And I went to them and I said, uh, I bought this yesterday, but it's already expired. I lied. It's a, it's a little white lie. And I said, so can I just exchange it for a new one? There was no money. I didn't get money out of it. I just exchanged old bread for new bread because for whatever reason, I didn't uh, get even open the old one. It's not like I opened it, ate three of them, uh, and then tried to return it for the money back. No, I, it was never even opened, and I just exchanged it. So the uh, cost to the grocery store for this is arguably pennies, arguably pennies. And I, mind you, I shop at the same grocery store multiple times every single week. So, they, you know, they've made their money off me. I think they can – They, as a matter of fact, when I go and do these returns from time to time, usually I'm pretty good about it. I don't let food go bad. But when I – have done this from time to time. The lady that works at the customer service just recognized me and knows. Like, she doesn't, nobody cares. But Scott Johnson and Peter Mingles care. So, I mean, yeah, I'm a terrible criminal. All right. Grand theft, non bread. So let's keep listening. Inspired item or items uh, scamming the Canadian government for about $10,000 in his tax returns. And in parentheses, Marco was caught on this crime and quote unquote repaid the debt by transferring it to his credit card with high interest rate fees, et cetera. <laughs> somebody said on the last stream, how could you, or no, somebody said, how could you pay high interest rates, Marco? I trusted you. Uh, this one actually is false. I'm sorry. All the other ones are true so far. So I'll give you that, Scott. Um, this one is false. I didn't scam the Canadian government. I owed money for taxes because I hired a new accountant who reassessed my taxes for 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. So the government sent me a bill saying, okay, here's what you owe us for all four of those years. You owe us this lump sum. So I was paying, I was, last year, for a good part of 2022, I was on a repayment schedule, $400 every month. I was paying into uh, my taxes, basically. I was paying the taxes off. And because I had that extra $400 a month burden and I wasn't making as much, I wasn't doing anti-MLM content, I wasn't making as much money and I had the added stress of $400 a month uh, for these tax repayments, I just started using my credit card to buy stuff when there wasn't necessarily money in my bank account. I was just using my credit card to cover for it. So because of that, my credit card debt increased. That's what he's referring to. I didn't, he's acting, he, he's, pitching it like I did some sort of like scam switcheroo somehow, which I don't even know how you would do with a credit card and your taxes. But this one, I'm, I'm going to actually, uh, unfortunately, Scott, it's, it's false. I'm sorry, I know, but this one is false. All the other ones, you know, we can talk about Papa John's and Starbucks and the grocery store. Those are all true, but this one's not true. These are a sample of what he has bragged about on his YouTube channel. The list is probably longer of those Marco did not brag. Marco has a whole system, yeah. <laughs> about. Um, I'll move on to the next paragraph. Marco has... Marco, the only serial criminal 
to commit crimes that nobody would even notice or care about. That's why I'm saying this. WestJet doesn't... Oh, you know what else I do sometimes? Sometimes when I go on a plane, I make sure that I board last. And if there's any empty first class seats, I just go and sit there and hope that they don't uh, kick me out of the seat. What are you going to do? Am I going to jail? So that's another one that I don't know if I've admitted to before, but I do that sometimes. Described how his estranged dad has scammed many people over the years. Jared says, I stole two grapes and ate them. I'm a monster. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, yeah, this is going to get me kicked off the conference, y'all. And how scamming is in his blood, as Marco is of Lebanese heritage, as if, as if this is a legitimate excuse. He has made numerous rap quote unquote songs glorifying his drug dealing experiences, further encouraging his goons to copy the behavior he has described to them with the above video. They did write a whole novel. Astonishingly. They did write a whole novel. Marco often hypocritically ends his videos with the message, don't do drugs. So true. Next paragraph. Marco should not be allowed to be associated with the upcoming conference or any of the attendees, quotation or parentheses, and this is really for Doug, uh, <laughs> unless they are providing personal legal advice, because you do have a right to legal advice, um, which he disclosed is to be held in Washington, D.C. on March 13th. Now, if you look at the last few videos that Marco has done, he says, well, we don't really know where it is. That's the secret. But two or three weeks ago, he was talking about, I'm going to Washington, D.C. I'm going to Washington, D.C. So we're pretty sure it's in Washington, D.C. I don't know where it is, actually. Um, he wasn't supposed to let the cat out of the bag, but he did. That's typical Marco. Um, I'll move on with the email. In fact, he should not be able to enter the country. And I have a link here to a... Uh, a story in, in vice.com where a British woman was trying to enter the country. This was about, I think, three or four years ago. And the customs people just noticed she wasn't acting correctly, you know, relaxed or whatever. Jared says, started, Marco, you rapped about drugs, money, and bitches. Don't you have any shame? No one does that. Yeah. 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 If you see, if you make rap songs, it will be a gateway to even worse crimes, like fishing without a license. <laughs> Asking her questions, uh, apparently they detained her for like 24 hours and just kept asking her questions. And they found on her phone a text referencing cocaine. And they asked this woman, you know, do you use cocaine? And she said, I used to. And they said, well, you can't come in the country. So how does a previous cocaine dealer compared to, to a cocaine user, <laughs> you know, to me, it's several levels higher as far as, you know, someone you don't want in this country, a dealer versus just someone that was a user at one point. Um, and I'll move on with the email. This person was denied entry because of a picture. Actually, I don't think it was a picture. I think it was a text. I read the story again. Uh, a text of cocaine uh, found on her telephone and admitted to being a previous cocaine user. Marco was and possibly still is a cocaine drug dealer, not still. a mere user. Still. He has claimed. On a Saturday night when everyone is out partying and I'm sitting here live streaming for three hours, I might possibly still be a drug dealer. So, I mean. These guys are smart. He is in dire financial straits in recent days. Marco's only income is from YouTube videos and possibly as a drug dealer. Do not fall in the chat. for Marco's fake smile and fake charm. He is a shyster through and through. He makes the slimiest MLM scam artist. Oh, yes. Sometimes also, Joey. Uh, sorry, Nerdsloft. Sometimes I pull out of my uh, parking spot before my seatbelt is actually on. I'll start reversing, and I'm reversing while I'm, like, doing this. So that's another crime that I do. Look like a Boy Scout. Last paragraph. If you have any questions and or would like to discuss Marco's behavior further, return an email or message to my Facebook at facebook.com slash Johnson. And that's a good plug for all these websites we were talking about. So if you go to my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Johnson. Um, you'll find my email, you'll find three websites, you'll find my YouTube channel, the link to this radio program for the past seven and a half years, um, and my 
Did I mention my YouTube channel? So anyway, there's a bunch of stuff there on my Facebook page. Um, I'll move on with the email. To set up a mutually available time to talk. I am generally available after 7 p.m. Central Time during the week, at times during the weekday, or most of the time on weekends, uh, regards Scott Johnson. So that was my email. Now, I've only heard back from a single person, and I've only heard back a single word. And that single word came from... Thank you, lazy little leopard. He's saying only one person responded to him with a single word. Let's see who it was. Bill Keep, who's the event organizer and has been for all three years that this, this conference has been held, and in all capital letters, Bill Keep answered unread. <laughs> <laughs> so the one person who replied to you, Scott, was the organizer of the conference, and he replied in all caps, unread. That is how little people respect you. You are a mosquito, you and, you and Peter. You guys are little specks of dust. You're nothing. You got a one-word response from one person, and the response was unread. <laughs> yes! You cannot make this shit up. Marco. Do you like me? <laughs> oh my God, I can't imagine how mad that made him. Oh my God, I need to drop unread merch, right? I need to drop unread merch. Oh my God. Normally people will have the decency to at least say, you know, I ain't reading all that, but sorry that happened or happy for you. Unread, that's, yeah, unread is dirty. <laughs> Such a killer reply. Bill Keep is a legend. I turn off my computer and go back to sleep. Imagine writing that whole multi-paragraph long-ass thing that you only had the information to write it from watching years, hundreds of hours of my content. And you, it all resulted in you getting a one-word reply. <laughs> Unread! What you were about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties oh have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here. Order! Order in the court. Oh my god. Scott Johnson, I have, uh, I have from your lawyer here a very long, multi-page long uh, defense of the accused. Uh, I want you to know I didn't read it. I'm going to go ahead and toss it. And... Uh, the charges still stand. Unread. Bill Keep with a bar. <laughs> Bars. You guys. The fact that he was, that he even said this out loud on the show is so embarrassing. Thank you, Lali H, for the donation as well. The fact that he said this on the show, he, he reiterated back to, to us. That, that he got a reply from Bill Keep and said, uh, unread. Mwah! It's so funny to me. I can't wait to see uh, what they say after this. Marco has the cheat sheet. Scott has the answer key. Yep. Unread, bro. Sorry, I'm reading your guys' comments. This is so funny, bro. <laughs> On his tombstone. Dismissed. Yeah, dismissed. Unread. Oh my goodness. Everyone go to their socials and simply re message unread. <laughs> Do you like me? Unread? Ah, it's so funny. Hi, Peter and Scott. When you need to go touch some grass when you see this. Thank you, Amber. I appreciate that. Oh my goodness. Oh, be jilly. Unread this baby. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That does go hard. That does go hard. Thank you, Amber. Wow, you guys. I want to have unread merch. I got you. I'm going to bring back the unread and cult member merch. Uh, I don't know why I took the cult member one down. I must have did that by mistake. Um, oh, my God. Unread. Merch. Unread. He must have lit yeah, literally been foaming at the mouth, says Confused AF. Log off, Scott. Uninstall the game. Ice cold. Why would he tell us this story? 
Oh my god, I would take that to the grave. I would have <laughs> Yeah, no shit. Oh, Bill Keep is a legend, bro. Legend for that. All right, I'm so I'm so curious to see where it goes from here. Let's let's continue listening. Bro, I couldn't script a better saga. This shit, I love it. I love it. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So, he's not he's not a fan of me and I'm not a fan of his, by the way. But anyway, um I don't think that this email should have anything to do with us not getting along on MLM conversation. Oh, sorry. And thank you, Bam, for the dono as well. I think I might have missed a couple of y'all because there was a few that came in right there. Uh, B, J B Gilly, thank you. Bam, Laura B, thank you guys. means a lot, for real. Y'all are helping me with this, uh, with this conference trip. It really means a lot. And, uh, yeah, now is the time. You know, I do need the help, so thank you. Because, again... To your point, Peter, I agree. I don't mind. Sammy Sosa says Batman couldn't get this out of me. I love it. Marilyn says you're gangsta AF. Oh, thank you, Marilyn. I appreciate that. Aww. Appreciate that. Yeah, Batman. Batman couldn't get this out of me neither. This shit. This shit is crazy. All right, let's go back. You got to get a, a screen cap of the actual email and put it on a shirt, and then blur it, and in front of it, put unread. That's what I'm gonna actually actually gonna do. Mm -hmm. Marco displaying his ignorance. I, I welcome it. I just don't believe he should do it in this country. How are they not embarrassed, right? Country because of who he is. Oh, um, and he, from he does not have the right, in my view, to be in this country. So we'll see what, what happens. You know, we've got until March 13th. Uh, he's trying to enter the country on March 11th. Um, and we'll just have to see, you know, what happens. You know, will all these organizers say, yeah, I don't mind being associated with Marco. <laughs> yeah, I know. I now know what I'm going to respond to MLM Huns in my inbox. Authorities later found Mr. Johnson's body lying in the basement of his house. An accompanying note was discovered in his pocket with a single word written on it, unread. <laughs> Will the Custom and Border Patrol say, hey, Marco, we know you are a cocaine dealer, um, but yeah, welcome into the United States. We're, we're, we're glad to have you. Um, so we'll see. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen, but um, anyway, that's the the email um, that, that was put out to all these people. And it was also forwarded, by the way, to the uh, Customs and Border Patrol uh, a little bit later. Um, Peace out, you know, the last that same one. That same day, I, I forwarded it to them as well to make sure that they were doing their due diligence and, and checking, uh, checking out Marco. So I'll stop there, Peter, and let you uh, make any comments. Well, the interesting thing about this... Ooh. Hold up, you know what I should actually do? There's a print shop close to my house. You know what I should actually do? I should go tomorrow. I should, when this stream is over, I should design the shirt on Canva really quick, make the shirt tomorrow, or they might be closed because it's Sunday. On Monday, go to the print shop, put, order a single shirt. I'll put it on the merch store as well, but if I want to have one, order a single shirt. Get them to print it, and I'm going to wear it underneath my suit to the conference and undo it like Superman, and I'll take a picture with Bill Keep at the conference and uh, <laughs> post that just to piss him off even more. <laughs> that would be too savage. That, that's actually giving them too much. Oh, my God, you guys. Whew. Exercise of these notifications is at least the people that are at the conference will know what kind of individual this person is. And they'll know it before he was there. They won't be able to say, we didn't know, um, and we wish we knew ahead of time. They know it. They willfully know it. They could easily, if they wanted to, take him off. I don't want them to. I hope they have him on, because it's really going to hurt their very long... Thank you, Gabe. Do you like me? Unread. <laughs> ...same anti-MLM argument which takes away from their very valid MLM arguments, but unfortunately, for them, there's no such thing as a good MLM. So whether it's the members of the FTC... Yes, and Paz, in the wasted font, like GTA, like that, yeah, unread, totally. Or whether it's Robert Fitzpatrick, who, by the way, always talks about, you know, the politiz politicalization, however I said that, uh, the, politi the, the political nature of wow. the impacts on MLM companies and the FTC, meaning that they're in bed together. And basically you're saying the FTC does nothing, 
and then having him speak with the FTC people and him openly criticizing academics and then yet surrounding himself with academics. So it's a very interesting crowd um, that's going to be there. But it really is, um, and it sh I wish it wasn't. I wish it was a positive anti-MLM conference, but based on the way they enclose themselves in the center circle, it won't be. So having said that, I just want to say a couple of things that um, I know Marco plays this or his goons listen to us, so this is much more of a serious nature. So Marco claims that I could be his grandfather. And this is to show you how stupid Marco is, but I'll blend it in with a story. I'm 60 years old. And Marco says, oh, shit. he could be my grandson. 60, okay, see, we're getting some personal information on y'all finally. How old am I? 26. 60 minus 26. So he would have been 34 when I was born. So it, it is a bit of a stretch, I guess, for him to be my grandpa. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like me saying he's old enough to be my grandpa. But okay, I'll let it slide. I mean, technically he could be my grandpa, but I'll let it. I'll let you have that. I'll let you have that, Peter. Cheek Queen, fuck Scott and PP. Unread. Thank you. Okay, let's listen. He's 60. Now, since Marco has referenced my son being in jail, I probably need to at least tell that story. Yeah! This is where he tries to make it like a sympathy thing for him and his son. He's going to pull the Joe Biden, uh, what's his name, Hunter Biden shit, where he talks about, he did have a drug problem and he kicked it and I'm proud of him. That's what, He's going to try to do that, I bet you. But, I mean, you can look up both Peter Mingles and Peter Mingles Jr. Uh, on Google. I'll let you do that on your own time. But he's basically going to try to now make me the bad guy for talking about it. Mind you, these are the same gentlemen who are behind alwaysmarco.lol, uh, alwaysmarco.gay, or is it marcomckyber.gay? I'm not sure. Uh, they've used the, so many slurs. The F slur, you know what I'm talking about, said that I have the body of a 13-year-old girl, which might not be a bad thing, except for the fact that I'm a adult man. And the list goes on and on. So let's just keep that in mind going into this here. Let's see. And you'll see where it blends into the drug thing. See, my son, when he was younger, got addicted to opioids. See, now he's going to say he's going to say that his son, who was an addict, is the victim. And me, who is the drug dealer in their story, is the bad guy. So I'm actually, you know, the scourge upon humanity. So let's see how they... He, dude, I'm getting to him. I'm really getting to him. He's never opened up like this and gone serious. Usually he just tries to act like, oh, Marco, he's, a, he's stupid. He's whatever. But this is good. The conference is what really set them off. So he was a drug user uh, addicted to opioids. And I had him... Unread. <laughs> stupid. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I know that wasn't really Bill, but thank you, Bill. Because if anybody's ever been through somebody who's had an addiction, I've got to take a little swipe at Marco. Marco has admitted he has an addiction to jerking off. <laughs> that far over Okay, this is not where I was expecting it to go, bro. This is not where I was expecting it to go. Okay, hold up. This whole time, I thought I was just a drug addict and dealer. Now, I have an addiction to jerking off. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Videos are oh gone from his second channel, Always Marco Extras. There used to be... 987 subscribers oh with lots and lots and lots and lots of videos. But if you go to the Always Mark Extras channel now, you'll find all of the videos gone <laughs> after he found that someone posted him admitting to jerking off in seventh grade because he had to, and he was interrupted by a disabled kid crawling into the bathroom stall so many oh of God. those videos on that always extra channel were those types of videos That's wow why he yes this is true this is true i've actually told this video uh before it was a clip on my second channel 
uh, I told this story in a video that actually got hundreds of thousands of views on my friend Philip's channel called, it was called um, uh, Throwing a Party at the Worst Reviewed Motel. I think that was the name of the video. You can go find that on Philip Solo is the name of the YouTube channel. I told this story about being in grade seven or eight, being in a bathroom stall in junior high school and a young boy with Down syndrome, like that famous viral video you've seen, but many years earlier, like, and obviously I didn't have a phone. He, this little boy with Down syndrome, while I was like in the stall, came and crawled under the stall and like looked at me. So this is the story that they're telling. I can't believe this. I thought he was gonna say something like heartfelt about his son. Deleted them because he wow. found that other people were seeing them that weren't his friends. So he deleted them all. Go to the about button on that link. You'll see that he's had 73,000 views on no videos. That is proof that he deleted them all. Dude, we didn't even get to the Herbalife shit yet, you know? Thank you, Ignacio. Appreciate you. So having said that, so my son was addicted to opioids. Anyways, Marco was jerking off in grade eight, in grade seven. Anyways, my son was addicted to opioids. Hell of a time, Scott. I mean, he stole stuff from me and probably other people. I mean, I found, you know, my watch at a porn shop, wedding ring at a porn shop. Uh, I found power tools sold before I can grab them from a porn shop. I mean, we've had, we had a horrible time with my son. I mean, I, I can go through a very long time for those people that want to hear it, but it was a really horrible time. And unfortunately, his girlfriend who became his wife at the time, I guess it was his girlfriend, at the beginning part of it was his girlfriend, also got hooked on it, and she's had a horrible time. I know he hates that he's, that he's telling me this now. He, he doesn't want to give me the upper hand. He, he doesn't know I already knew all of this. Sorry to break it to you, Peter, but go ahead. As well, they are both not on it right now. My daughter-in-law's life will be shortened um, because of her drug use. Admittedly, my granddaughter was lucky enough to be saved because in Florida they have a thing called Project Warm. As soon as they saw that my daughter-in-law was pregnant, they put her in a home, basically like a woman's jail, and they said, this baby is not your baby, it's the state's baby, because you're a drug addict. And so my son being a drug addict, my daughter-in-law being a drug addict, and, you know, we come from a really clean family. This is the first time we've ever experienced it. So I had my son arrested because it was either he was going to die, suicide himself, or be in jail for something that I couldn't figure out. By the way, sorry, quick sidebar. I wonder if Peter is going to address how I pointed out it's so ironic that he used the F slur towards me and his daughter is gay. I wonder if he is going to address that, but probably not. So stupid people like Marco should have been able to figure out his date of birth. Because if you look at the mug shots, it's going to show you the date of birth and what he was in jail for. And here's my little winding Marco story. I wonder how he's going to tie this back to me jerking off. Marco, he was born uh, in 1988, uh, which makes him 35 or almost 35 now. I'm 60. My son is 35. You're going to be 27. My son would have had to have you when he was eight years old. <laughs> I love how I love how this is where we are in this in the saga in the arc of this story. This is about multi-level marketing. <laughs> this whole thing is supposed to be about multi-level marketing and now we're ta we're talking about the math discrepancy on the claim that Peter could be my grandfather or not. Yes, Peter, I get it. Your son if we factor him in. I'm just talking about you. You're 60. You could be my father or grandfather. I think my actual dad is 55. So I'll give you that. But again, it's just this whole thing tickles me. In order for you to be my grandson. So always stupid, Marco. Every time you open up your mouth, you say shit that you've never researched. Doesn't make any sense. This might be a small example of just showing me how much of an asshole you are. But also being able to explain a little bit about my son and his mugshots. Well, here's the problem with drugs and people trying to recover from drugs, they put him in something called drug court Tell me what's the down problem. here in Florida. And um, through drug court, he was released, and any kind of a drug addict always goes back. So when you go back, you violate parole, you get rearrested, 
you get more mug shots. If you're a drug addict, you go back on drugs. Sure, this is a way. And you get rearrested, and you go back to jail, and you do that for many years in a row. And it probably took over five years, several stints in rehab, put my family and himself through hell. So, Marco, I'm going to ask you this question. And Marco's listeners, I want to ask you this question. Let me tell you a little bit about Marco's listeners. Please. There's people that come into Marco's channel, and they immediately leave. They say, this guy's a fucking idiot, and they just go. <laughs> so true. So they just leave, and he never sees them again because intelligent people usually leave. Um, next, you have his goons. They're the internet kind of trolls. You know, what are you going to do with them? They have no better place to go, and they just kind of hang around. They think it's kind of fun. They don't understand the depth of his stupidity, and they just think it's a good time. And I kind of get it. You know, immature. I've had immature kids before, been around immature kids, you know, even sometimes immature adults. So some people hang around just because he's kind of funny. And Marco's got a sense of humor. He says Aww. some things that are witty. He's Aww. Aww. Peter, you've said two nice things about me on this episode, that I'm funny. And earlier you said you don't disagree with me on everything. Aww. Things are changing. Maybe you will be like a father to me after all. You and Dominic. Not always stupid. He's always stupid in the facts that he says, but he could—he does have a brain. But the bottom line is that some people may even need Marco. You know, I've been around the Internet for a really long time, Scott. I've dealt with schizophrenics. I've dealt with people that have committed suicide or almost committed suicide, attempted suicide, all those types of things. Some people need to just to feel like they have a community to be associated with. So there might be some people that are listening in right now that might be part of that. I'm not talking about that. If, if you enjoyed this community that he's developed because it, it's just saving you for something else, that's fine. I'm talking about, like, the, the people that are just like, this is just fucking stupid. So always stupid, Marco. I'm going to ask you this very pointed question. Ask me. How do you think Peter Mingles, the guy who had the son who was hooked up on drugs, and the guy who has the daughter-in-law who's stealing, still dealing with the challenges associated with withdrawals associated with the stuff that they put her on after they got her off the stuff that she was on who has a granddaughter who's dealing with all this stuff who's probably going to lose her mom decades before she should based on drugs marco what's the question what do you think peter mingles would do if he had those drug dealers face to face in a quiet room with no one watching. <laughs> That's it! That's the question? Oh, wow. He really thought this was like a, you know, Denzel Washington equalizer moment where he was going to strike fear into me. That's the bar? If you want to make a funny fucking comment, that's how stupid you are. Oh, I already made the comment. <laughs> You just said I was funny. I'm so confused. So, Marco, the idea that you used to sell drugs and you thought or you think that just because you stopped and your friend Philip, just because you stopped and you got away with it and you didn't go to jail, that you didn't do any damage? How many people do drug dealers kill? How many people does your anti or your MLM community people kill, Marco? I'll share with you. You don't even have to look. You don't even have to be an academic fucking idiot to realize that drug dealers kill way more people. There's no comparison. But Marco... I thought, I thought drug addiction was a disease. I thought addiction was a disease. What do you think I would do to the person or persons that were responsible for the... Yeah, he thought this was a Liam Neeson moment. The drugs that my kids were buying or my kid was buying. I think you should have been a better parent, uh, Peter, first of all. That's my answer. Second of all, if the drug dealers that sold your kids the drugs or your son the drugs hadn't sold it to them, some other drug dealer would have. It's sort of an arbitrary point that you're making. The drugs would have been made available. Whether it was John that sold it or Bob that sold it, somebody was going to fill that need in the marketplace of drug dealing. Somebody was going to sell it to your son. The real issue in, in addiction is not trying to pluck the leaves off of the tree 
which are inevitably going to grow back, you should deal with the root of the problem, the root of the tree. And the fact of the matter is, Peter, your son was an addict, as you described, was pawning off your wedding ring, pawning off jewelry, pawning off power tools. Your son was going to find drugs one way or another. You've made that very clear. Your son was the catalyst. Your son was the variable that made it so that the cycle continued. Yes, the drug dealers were also complicit. However, if it wasn't one drug dealer, it would have been another. So sure, if you had those specific drug dealers in front of you that your son went to, I'm sure you would probably not be happy with them because you blame them. Once again, it's an example of you being so very close to understanding something that does harm to people. MLM being the other example that I can think of where you're so close to getting it, but you just are too stupid to get it. And I wish you didn't tell me your age. I wish you didn't tell me that you were 60 because the fact that you are 60, older than my actual dad, but not quite old enough to be my grandpa, the fact that you are actually 60 years old makes me pity you that much more. You are more than twice my age. You should be more wise experienced, smarter than me. And I feel like I am talking to a teenager. Well, we're not even talking directly. I'm talking to you through the internet and you're gonna watch this later with a piece of paper in your hand all crumpled up like gadget, like Dr. Claw. Peter, you're stupid. You're a stupid person. And both you and Scott, I'm glad that you actually told the story of your son's drug addiction because on Scott's debate that he did with Savvy on her channel back in 2021, he talks about how his biggest regret, wasting 10 years and countless dollars in Amway, was missing out on his children's lives because he was so busy chasing the next rank, whatever they call it, diamond or whatever, amethyst in Amway. He missed out on his kids' childhoods. He was an absentee father because he was pursuing Amway, and that's his biggest regret. You said in the last episode of this show that you had fought— hired and fired yourself three times from Amway, and you were in other MLM companies before that, and you're still uh, doing a, a business that is directly involved with MLM, selling leads to people. I think the real issue here isn't even MLM. It's not drugs. It's not whatever Scott Johnson wants to say. The real issue here at the heart of everything is that you and Scott are too stupid ill-equipped people who made bad decisions and fucked up your children's lives as a result and your lives as well. I mean, I probably wouldn't be too happy about my son pawning off my wedding ring either. You guys, again, I've said this before. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. I have only been around 20, almost 27 years, but in that time, I've met a lot of people and I've met a lot of stupid people. And even though we haven't met, I have to say, from where I'm sitting, you and Scott are the stupidest people, the stupidest people I have ever come across in my entire life. But I love you. I love you because you guys create this show and you make such good content for us to watch. And it's actually it never ceases to amaze me how many more layers we can go uh, into your delusion, you and Scott, in, into your uh, nonsense. You guys keep surprising me with how stupid you are. So uh, I'm sounding like you now, but let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. What my daughter-in-law was taking. What do you think I would do with those people? Now, some of the snarky ones in the chat can say things like, well, you know, they were part of the, they were part of the problem too. Absolutely. It was my son's fault. But no, if, if anybody really- Alex, great comment. It sounds like Ming should focus on his family and not Marco. Exactly. You guys have been doing this show every Saturday night in the garage for the last 10 years. How many hours do you think you've contributed to that? Go be a, go raise your family. Go fix your family, dude. He understands addiction. You got to talk to Marco about his jerking off addiction. <laughs> See, when you oh, sorry. I forgot all about that part. I was wondering how he was going to tie me jerking off back into it. Let's go. Have an addiction, it's really hard to stop. Also, anti-MLM people kill people. So Marco... You can explain to people about addictions, you know, your flashlight, the video. Remember you had the flashlight video on your... Yes, classic video. I wish you guys, if you guys haven't seen that video, I'll, 
uh, I should post the link in the Discord or something, but I did a video at the beginning of last year where I did a dono goal on stream. I said, I'll review a flashlight uh, if somebody, if y'all just raise the money for the flashlight, and I did, and I, I've used it like three times. It's not really my thing, but yeah, he's he's not wrong about that video either. That video does exist too. Channel, right? Remember all that sort of stuff and talking about the lubrication and the jerking off in the bathroom stalls and all the other things, Marco. <laughs> so you don't understand addictions. Well, just transmutate that to a drug addiction, Marco. Transmutate. Where people physically can't stop, where they might actually die if they stop. This is the sloppiest analogy. He's make he's 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 unintentionally making it so funny, but he's trying to talk about something serious that's actually affected his life. That's how like uh not polished his abilities at of speaking are. They're shooting up where they're doing the other things, almost attempting committing suicide or doing it, or even going further, Marco. And then you'll wonder why some people might have a challenge with you being a drug dealer past previous or future so back to you scott wow bars got him marco got him marco he really thought he did something yeah and, and uh, you made the point before too peter that you know who turned in your son i did when when he when he was stealing all those things too and and probably others right it wasn't just you it was probably this is their therapy tc this is their therapy you know you know parents of his other friends, whoever it was, and you turned them in. Now, that's what you call real love, you know, tough love, I guess is a term, but it's really love because, you know, a, a dad is, is going to love their kids unconditionally, even if it makes life hard for them in the short term because it's the right thing to do. Thank you, Marco Ignacio. never has that in mind as far as the right thing to do. Um, and, and a lot of his commenters are just as stupid as he is. Uh, the, one of his recent videos, just as an example, I mean, I, if I went back, I could find lots of examples. But just as one example, um, as he was talking about the Customs and Border Patrol um, and me notifying them that he should not be entering this country. And Pez says he's bodying his own son. It's actually fucked. Yeah, it is fucked. If I was your son, I wouldn't be happy about you putting my mistakes out there like that. But... You know, Peter doesn't care. Peter will burn the whole farm down if it means killing that one, you know, uh, mosquito in the barn. I am the mosquito in this analogy. Three, um, there was three or four comments along the lines of, well, Scott's the one that should be arrested. He's the one that broke the law. He's the one that should go to jail. I mean, how stupid can you be for notifying public safety <laughs> You know, government. Back to you, Scott. <laughs> Meek, after that whole long emotional diatribe, Peter did. Back to you, Scott. Back to you, Scott. How are we going to Burger King this, Peter? Agencies about a crime, about a criteria that should keep somebody out from, for, from entering this country and then be called breaking the law and should be arrested and should be put in jail. It, it's just such the opposite of of logical it's extremely stupid but that's an example of the people that follow marco and nobody corrected anybody on those comments during the chat they they just made the comment and it just kind True, of Alex. floated out there nobody said oh that's not really you know what scott was doing it was you know hello meek what's love all i know is tool scam yep scott was not breaking the law nobody pushed back at all on it marco didn't pick up on it nobody else picked up on it and so it's just so clear that, that these tool scams, are they in the room with us right now? Not only is Marco always stupid, but his his followers, his goons, his fans are also very stupid when they. Thank you, Emily. What up, Emily? I forgot it was a two person podcast. Yeah, Peter went in for a minute there, bro. He really did. You just don't understand. And thank you, Eliza. Congrats on your recovery. Stand basic things like that. It's just amazing to me. Um, and it's just further evidence of because why he should be in this country um, because he's going to be around those people that are – Is he crying? You know, really worshiping him in, in some sense and giving him money. I mean, they're giving, he, he begs for money on every show all, all show long. You know, he, he's constantly begging for money. You know, I have to pay for my hotel. I need to pay for my airline. I need to pay for my uh, Uber. I need to pay for, 
you know, this and that, meals, all this other stuff. So true. Just so we can come to the undesignated place in Washington, D.C. Um, so, I mean, the guy's out of control, and fortunately, he attracts people that are just like him. So, anyway, I'll stop oh. there. I could go on. Yep. And the, the point that I really want to make is, is as much as he's not an expert, he's not a guru, he's just somebody who shoots off his mouth. He doesn't really, he doesn't research anything. If he researched the things about me, uh, he would find that uh, the last thing he'd probably do is call me a fucking idiot. But he's just uh, somebody who shoots his mouth off. And he can do that at a distance because he's far away and he would never do that in front of me. So I realize that stuff. You know, as a, as, as a guy who grew up in New York, a guy who kind of has been around the block a Drop little bit. Drop the address. You know where I am. A little bit. Somebody who understands how things work. You know, when people do this sort of stuff, you know, you just look at him and you just you, you waste your time with other people. So he's not worth it. But for the people that are listening to him and his advice, those are the real victims. Unfortunately, those are the people that are being abused. And I don't mind addressing that. Guys, make sure you go to Streamlabs.com and pay your goon tax right now if you are in this cult and you agree that I am abusing you. And you, if, if you like it, if you are willingly being abused and you like it, and this is like some sadomasochism type beat. Hit that stream, lads. Billions and billions. And he can continue on with his own town doing his own thing. But there are some people that will actually be harmed by his absolute ignorance in many areas. And that's the things that I just want to bring attention to. And let him, let him build a successful YouTube career, <laughs> you know, with all the people that want to follow him. But the smart ones, Marco, they leave. You know, the stupid ones, they stay behind and they comment on trolls and they may throw some money at you. And there might be some people that desperately need, you know, just some community to become part of and maybe that's your place. But when it comes to an MLM expert and... Uh, yeah, and pass, totally. He, Peter will say, he's not worth it. And then talk about me every Saturday for two years. Peter always says, oh, I don't watch Marco. I don't listen to that. And then he, go, he does shit like this. That sort of stuff, you're, you're tainting the brand that I think Bill Keep... Taint? would want to promote but when bill keep writes the things that he writes or robert fitzpatrick may say the things that he does um we just say let you know let, they deserve what they get if they bring marco on board so there you go so scott back to you yeah a good point um thank you bam i appreciate that 10 lashes please yeah <laughs> oh man so bad uh, jordan says i've been a victim and abused oh man I'm stupid. Me stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Again, Scott and Peter, please know we are all not just like Marco. I'm a, not all just like Marco. I'm a 55-year-old high school math teacher. Thank you, Sonia. Goon tax Bible thump. Bleed ah. purple. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. That's amazing. Wow. Um, says the guy who eats, sleeps, and breathes, Marco. Yeah. Yeah. No, Joey. No violence. I don't incite violence. They were, lol, remember they were moving on from Marco 45 minutes ago, right? It, it, there was another thing that I wanted to kind of bring out. We're kind of getting near the end of the, the show time sure. here. Mind you, this show is called Building Fortunes Radio. It's all about me. It's not about business. It's not about MLM. It's not about building fortunes. It's about Marco and his niece's birthday party and him jerking off when he was uh, 14. Um, but there's another thing I wanted to kind of bring out, and, and that was uh, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any other comment? Maybe it'll come back to me. That's a great point, Bad Dog Sports. Peter says that people, or Peter and Scott say that people who watch me and stay are stupid, but nobody gives them more viewing hours than them. Amazing. No, you know, I'm, we got, I'm nice. we got I'm probably over 100 of us now. Talk. But this is the reason why we did this, most of this radio show, is because this is the <laughs> last one before Marco had. And Meek says, every stream I watch, a wrinkle in my brain smooths over. Out to wherever he's going to go. And it's probably Washington, D.C., because there's FTC people there. And the FTC people aren't going to fly to someplace else, most likely. I'm also going to do a Losing Fortunes radio shirt. I think I'm going to do a merch that says Losing Fortunes radio on it. So it's probably Washington, D.C. And it doesn't really matter. The really strange thing, Scott, is why is it such a secret? You know, why wouldn't it be available to a small audience if they wanted to go? But it's a Zoom meeting, and they're doing it for maybe filming purposes and other stuff. But um, I did not ask to be on that. If they did ask, I wouldn't – I would not. I just lost my train of thought is a drop. Hilarious. Beyond that conference, the way it's set up. Um, but – 
Yeah, Sina says, good to know you always have a place where you can stay rent-free, right? Yes, Scott and Peter are certified goons because they have tuned in the most time. They've, they've banked the most time watching me, for sure. Uh, <laughs> Gabby says, I can picture this guy's spouse like, honey, how was your night sitting in the garage talking about that kid on YouTube again? <laughs> so good. How to build fortune. Step one, Marco. Step two, Marco. Step three, move on from Marco. Step four, Marco. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> so funny. And I would have conversations with anybody who wants to have an open, positive conversation about the challenges associated with MLM. So back to you, Scott. Yeah, it just came back to me. One of the comments that Marco was getting during one of his recent videos was some of the people that were his fans. Because I'm stupid. Hey, thank you, Mrs. Stitch. Thank you for being stupid and watching me. Thank you for being so stupid. You're broke. You're fucking poor. Thank you. Well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to boycott the conference I'm because somebody that is a presenter at the conference did me wrong. They doxed me or whatever. You know, there's all this drama in the background, by the way, if you don't know. All the anti-MLM huns, as I call them, uh, they're always going at each other. But one of the uh, other complaints was there wasn't enough diversity. So, so the anti-MLM women are Huns? Okay. I don't know exactly, you know, what they were talking about as far as diversity, because they didn't name any specific examples, but there are women and men. Um, I don't think there's a lot of minorities. Thank you, Diana. She says it's tax season. So true, so true, frankly. I know a lot about the tax code, because I use it. Thank you, Andrew. Here we go. Appreciate your work, man. It's super important these type of scams are called out. Thank you, bro. Appreciate that a lot. Um, I don't think there's any... Uh, well, let's see. There might be... Goods on both sides, frankly. Great goods. Great guy. I like him. Big, strong guy, Peter Mingles. If you ever saw, in, saw you in person... Whoa! Watch out. Watch out. You'll be met with fire and fury, frankly. There might be some gay people. I'm not sure. I don't think there's any trans people. Um, but what they're really missing, I mean, really missing, is the diversity of ideas. What they've got is the same, like you mentioned earlier in the show, it's the same rerun people. I'm expecting the same rerun comments. And all they're doing is saying, this is terrible, this is terrible. But they're not getting down to the real solution they're not, not talking about tool scams and lack of retail sales proposing anything other than you need to shut down mlms and and it's just crazy how they keep this woke mentality uh, of you know diversity but then they completely forget about diversity of ideas and how they could actually make progress um, if, if they had other people Obama. there, such as me and you, um, and I'm not begging to be on because I know Bill Keep and I don't get along with each other, um, but that's what they're really lacking is a diversity of ideas. Um, and that's why they're just stuck, I think, for the third year in a row. I mean, we'll see on March 13th whether Paying my goon tax. You know, they come up with anything different other than what. Thank you, Taisha. I appreciate you. I hope I'm saying your name right. Taisha, appreciate that. Thank you so much. Pay your goon tax. They've been complaining about the past two years on, on the conference and, and really not offering solutions other than you need to just shut down MLM completely, which I just can't see happening. Um, but that's how lost they are um, and, and not thinking about the right kind of diversity. So... I'll stop there. I, I think we're just about done for the hour and yeah, a half here, Peter. Did you have you more? I'll, close, I'll close it up by helping Marco, who should know but doesn't know what the Ides of March means. <laughs> see, Marco is <laughs> yes, because on the stream I said, see, this just proves they watch every moment of every stream. I said, I don't know what the Ides of March is. My birthday is March 15th. It's coming up here in uh, 10 days. Uh, I don't know what the Ides of March is, and so they – you know, he wants to explain it to me. Thankfully, Julie Anderson did explain it to me on her stream yesterday. Go follow Julie. But here, let's let Peter explain it, too. We went to high school, even in Canada, in 11th or 12th grade. You probably were taught some Shakespeare stuff. Now they don't do that anymore. Now they do indigenous stuff over in Toronto, I understand. But being in Edmonton when you were in high school, they probably taught in 11th or 12th grade Julius Caesar. 
and Julius Caesar. No, actually, we read Othello. Was actually speaking at the Senate, you know? And but I know the saying, a tu Brutus. I, did, I just didn't know that was the Ides of March. I know the whole a tu Brutus thing. In Rome at that time, and when he was speaking at the Senate, the senators. The Ides of Marco, yep. So true. So true. Wound up stabbing Julius Caesar to death. But prior to that, Julius Caesar had like, you know, the wizard kind of creepy people say, beware the Ides of March. And he disregarded that. And when he was being stabbed to death by the senators, there was one, a tu brut, which means, and you too, Brutus, he said, as Brutus was one of his best friends, were stabbing him relentlessly, killing Julius Caesar. And the idea that you are born on the Ides of March, and you've heard the term the Ides of March, and you went to school where they taught things like Julius Caesar, probably explains how you did in school, Marco. But the reality is, is Marco, some of your best friends. That's a new drop right there. Marco. No, that one's better. Are sending us information that we will be showing later. So, a to brute. And I'll leave it at that. So, Scott, thanks for being here. We'll catch everybody next time on Building Fortunes Radio. See you then. Wow. Thanks, Peter. You've been listening to oh, Building Fortunes Radio oh, that's on good. buildingfortunesradio.com. For the designated Building Fortunes Radio. Okay, so I guess only the live broadcast cuts off, but it does keep recording after the fact. Wow, we made it through. We made it through, guys. Do I even have time now to go through this Herbalife video that I, that I said the whole stream was going to be about? I just wanted to touch on this Building Fortunes Radio quickly before we got into the Herbalife stuff. And this whole time, uh, we've been on this. So I don't know, have I been going too long already? Do I stop? What do you, what do you wanna say? What do you say, guys? Um, we've already been going two hours and 42 minutes. Do I stop or do we watch this Herbalife video? By the way, Eric Worre has a, a video called We Are Not Direct Selling and We Are Not MLM. Love it. Okay, appreciate Y'all want to see, you're looking forward to Herbalife, okay. They need to rename their show Building Marco Stories. Brute, okay, got you. Um, they've never done a full BFR episode on you. No, but they've gotten close. That one was close. I mean, I think that, was that episode a full episode on me? Pretty much, aside from the intro, right? Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, and they said that they have somebody feeding them information that confirms my theory that they have a former fan of mine who is feeding them uh, links and information and rumors and things of that nature. So it's only going to make for great, even better content in the future. And that old fan was a rat fuck anyways. So fuck them. But, uh, you know, let's check it. So this is called, if you guys were there the other day, there was about 40 people total that were watching the Betting on Zero documentary with me in the Discord server, which you can join the Discord server for free in the description. It might be fun to do more uh, viewing parties like that. We, maybe we'll watch another MLM-related thing like Lula Rich or something like that in the, uh, in the future here. So, yeah, a whole hour long, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Until today. It's so true. Good night to those who are leaving. Appreciate y'all. Uh, thumbs up the ting if you're leaving and thumbs up the ting if you're staying too. Uh, they do have an informant. I'm giving Marco content radio. You guys' comments are creative AF and it really makes my day. You guys' comments crack me up. Especially sometimes I go back and I watch on double speed to try to catch comments that I missed. And you guys kill me. All right, let's go. So this, we watched the documentary Betting on Zero about how Herbalife is a pyramid scheme. And this guy who is in Herbalife made this video talking about why that movie is poppycock. So let's watch it and see what he has to say. I'm going to play it. I'm going to grab some more water here. For taking the time to watch this video, uh, I want to do a quick review of a documentary I saw the other night called Betting on Zero. Okay, now this is a documentary that kind of tries to like um, bash the company called Herbalife. Now I'm an Herbalife member myself, and I've been in this company for five years. So watching this documentary was uh, laughable to say the least. Like um, how the information, how they twist it all up. So I really felt compelled to do a video because I looked up on YouTube and there were none. So I had to give the opposite side of of that story. 
you know, if you're gonna watch that video, just make sure, especially if you're gonna go, uh, you know, spouting things as like fact, make sure you research both sides. Because what happens a lot of times is someone watches a video like that and uh, without researching the other side, and then they go tell their friend, da, 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 and those people take it as fact. All right? and, and basically so many things in there are uh, either complete lies or they're like misconstrued, twisted numbers and truths, right? So, uh, you know, I had a lot of friends messaging me in my putting on my Facebook inbox like, hey, what is this documentary telling me about? And so I kind of got like tired of like messaging them and telling them, oh, it's nothing. Da, da, da. So I figured I'd make a video for those guys and I'll send it and put it in their inbox. So that's what this is. All right. So uh, as far as the video goes, as soon as that documentary starts, it hits you with this quote. Right. And basically that quote says something to the effect of what a, it like tries to define what a pyramid scheme is. OK. And it says a pyramid is basically when a company is making most of its income or most of its profits from recruiting rather than the sales of products. Right. Well, here's the thing. I'm going to bust that one up. First off, we as Herbalife distributors make zero dollars, zero, Z-E-R-O, zero dollars for recruiting people. Okay, I could recruit you and a hundred people today, and I would make zero dollars. Okay, the only way. By the way, I'm not sure if dietitian Cat Benson is still here, but if you are, I'm not sure if you have any videos about Herbalife. I'm sure you probably do, but I'm curious to hear your take on the actual product of Herbalife. All right, let's listen. He's saying we're not a pyramid scheme because we don't get paid to recruit. This is a misconception uh, that you know, if a product does sell stuff, then it's not a pyramid scheme. Pyramid schemes are just money. They don't have products. No, actually, that's a Ponzi scheme. Pyramid schemes can have products. There have been over 30 companies shut down by the FTC and other regulatory agencies for being pyramid schemes. All of them had products. Vima, great example. Vima was shut down. Vima had many, many products, and uh, it was not that did not stop it from being a pyramid scheme. We make income. The only way is from the sales of the products themselves. Okay, so it's the exact opposite. He is telling the truth. Herbalife representatives do generate income from the sales of products. Who are they selling the products to though? The people that they recruit into the business. They disguise the cost of a recruitment because you have to buy a starter kit. They disguise the recruitment cost as really the cost of the product. When in reality, think of most MLMs, the products are stuff that is manufactured for dirt cheap. All the stuff you get in a Herbalife starter kit, there's no reason for it to cost you a, a couple hundred dollars. The actual product costs on all that stuff, powders and shit, it's pennies. It's nothing. So again, it is just a way. So if I wanted to run a Ponzi scheme where I want to make sure that $300 goes into my pocket, I might make the entry fee $400 and then $100 would be for the overhead cost of the actual products that you're getting. So that way I've not only covered my cost of the products, I've now effectively put $300 in my pocket for the purpose of running a Ponzi scheme. And then you can go out and sell that $400 startup kit to other people. So this is a, uh, it's a conflation of the word sales. It is not sales because the sale is really just a disguised recruiting cost. It is, it is a disguised opportunity cost. Of what that thing's trying to make you see. So if you see the- Also, LOL, his do what you love, love what you do pillow. Video. Or you do you love what you do pillow. Quote, and that quote right off the bat is completely wrong. Or it could be right, but it's not describing Herbalife, that's for sure. Uh, basically, if you want to think about what Herbalife is, you know, uh, think if you- Cat Benson, who is a dietitian, does not recommend Herbalife. If you had a car dealership and you brought on car salesmen, all right, you don't get paid. The the the, the uh, dealership doesn't make money from bringing on car dealer or car salesmen, right? The only way. They so here's his next analogy. You know, this is his next false false defense. We don't make money from recruiting people. It's just like in a car dealership. If you bring on car salesmen, you don't get paid from recruiting car salesmen. They have to sell a car. Okay, well, if you wanted to use the car salesman analogy and actually have it hold up when comparing it to multi-level marketing, it would look like this. A car salesman wants to become, oh, sorry, a potential car salesman wants to become a car salesman at your dealership, except he has to buy a car in order to join. And every month he has to pay for fees relating to that car and buy, you know, more 
car parts every subsequent month. That is, that is the, how you would actually make the analogy equal. Because in MLM, you have to pay to join. If you don't think that's the case, go find, go find me a single person out there who sells direct sales on behalf of an MLM company and they didn't have to pay anything. Go find me that. You don't have to pay to work at a car dealership. You just don't. You might have to pay for background checks, things of that nature, but those are to the government. You're not actually paying for the opportunity. You know, it just doesn't make sense. Why would, if your goal as a company was really to make sales and you had able-bodied people that were going to go make those sales for you, why would you put the obstacle in their way and in effect in your way by making them pay to sell? They're going and making sales for you, right? They go make a sale. The product is 100 bucks. They take 40, you take 60, or they take 70, you take 30 more realistically. Okay, great. Money was made. So why would you make them pay on top of it? Why would you make, why would you hurt, their, why would you include a barrier to entry when your goal is to make sales? They make money is if those car sal salesmen can sell cars. Okay, and the only way those car salesmen can even sell ca sell cars is if that dealership already has the the inventory, right? And they provide the place for you to do everything. That's what Herbalife does. Herbalife just provides us with the inventory. Okay, uh, so the only way I even make any money is when I sell products to uh, a customer, and that that uh, company uh, that documentary tries to make you think that to sign up in Herbalife you got to pay like hundred dollars and then buy like four thousand dollars worth of products. That's literally what they say. Right, $100, $100 to sign up and then you got to buy $4,000 up front to become a supervisor and you just got to you know, put it in your garage and keep it there and then try and sell it. Right. Exactly, Bad Dog Sports. 99% of car salesmen don't lose money. True. And they would come back and say, well, 99% of car salesmen actually never even sell a car, which is also not true, but you know. Well, well, well 50% of marriages fail. Is marriage a scam? Again, it's a deflection because even in a case like marriage, where you could make some arguments for how the institution of marriage is flawed, and that's why they have a 50% failure rate, all you're really doing is pointing out why something else is also ineffective. You're not pointing out that your thing isn't a scam. You're just pointing out that something else may also be a scam, which I don't think marriage is a scam. Marriage actually depends, does depend on the people in it. It is not a system designed for you to fail. You know, it's not designed for that purpose. MLM is. So, you know, you guys have seen me. I remember doing an Instagram live with a guy from IM Academy back in 2021. And he said, you know what the real scam is? College. And there was people in the chat like, tell them. And I'm like, okay, I, you know what? I'll agree. There's a lot of things wrong with college. Student debt is a huge issue. Uh, a lot of the times the professors are hypocritical because they're telling you how to be successful in marketing, for example, and yet they have not chosen to apply that knowledge and they're here teaching you a course instead. Well, why wouldn't they go and be a successful marketer if, or whatever? You know, there's many examples, but he didn't address any of my criticisms. All he said was that, well, you know what else is also a scam? Uh, it's language games. That's all it is. Learning to speak in riddles, learning to talk for a long time without actually saying anything. But I digress. Wagwan Specs, yeah, it was a modness. Hi, Specs. All right, that's completely false, okay? When I signed up to be an Herbalife distributor, you guys, I was on unemployment. I had, I was at my wits end. I was living in law. He's uh, hitting another check mark for me, which is I firmly believe, and you've heard me say this in the multi level misery episodes. I believe nobody joins an MLM when their life is going good. People join when they're desperate because that's when your critical thinking is suspended. That's when somebody can swoop in and say, hey, bro, I've got the thing. And you're like, okay, I just need something now. I'll take it. Fuck it. I'm not going to do much research. I'm not going to think too hard about it. And uh, this guy is proving that in his case as well. Los Angeles, and, and I didn't know what I was going to do, okay? And at that time, I think like it was after taxes and stuff, $79 to become a distributor. Now after taxes, it's like $100, okay? But you don't have to buy anything up front. And actually, whenever you're getting registered, there's things you have to approve and click to say like, I, you know, like I have read and understood. One of them is there's no need for you to buy product inventory. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no requirement to buy any of it, right? 
And so like that, that blows that right out of the water. Like this, this documentary is going to have you thinking that it, when you're watching it, you're going to be like, Oh my God, that's so terrible. Like, and what's funny is it has me questioning all documentaries now because of how when they twist something and they only give you that one side, how it's very believable. So insane, Stephanie. So that's another reason why I felt very compelled to do this, um, th this, this review here to blow some. It's funny that he even felt compelled to do a review of a documentary criticizing his company at all. Because imagine if you worked for Apple and a documentary came out about Apple saying how bad it was. I highly doubt that you would see ra regular old run-of-the-mill Apple employees making YouTube videos talking about it. As a matter of fact, Apple probably has some sort of policy where they don't even allow that type of stuff from their current uh, employees. I'm sure that when you join Apple, there's some sort of contract you sign that makes makes it so you're not going to go out and, and talk bad about Apple after the fact. So, I mean, again, another element to this cult shit is like trying to control the flow of information. You know, it's they rely on it. Some of these things out of the water because it's complete, completely false. OK, I didn't have to buy anything and keep anything in my garage or in my apartment or anything. You know what I did whenever I started on some products myself? Okay, and then my friends started seeing my results and they got the same program I did. And you know what? They put the money in my hand and then I ordered it and went from Herbalife to their doorstep. Not a $4,000 worth of stuff or even $100, even $5 worth of stuff in my apartment that I had to, you know, give out to people. Like that was ridiculous. Now, in the past, you could do that. You could order products up front and keep them at your house and sell them like that. And some people would, but that's a business choice. All right, and that's something that they chose to do. And if they didn't have money, then I don't know why they would do that because I wouldn't have never been able to do that. And since then, and, and since like 2012, Herbalife has had this thing where the most you can even purchase your first few weeks that you're in your Herbalife is a thousand dollars, thousand volume points worth to stop those types of things from happening. Okay, what you have to understand is there were some loopholes because Herbalife has a, a, a you know, it's getting better and better. Imagine if you started your own company and you had a marketing plan, of course, like it's gonna get better and better over the years. And anytime a loophole was found, then we closed it up and that was one of them, All right? So, and either way, that's a business choice. Again, like the people who are in this movie and they're trying to seem like they're victims, like, no, they, they spent all this money, invested it into their company and it didn't work out. That was a bad choice. They never, ever, ever had to do that. I never had to do that. So don't make it seem like that's what Herbalife suggests and that's how Herbalife does things. It's not true at yeah, all. Yeah, they literally restructured it because they got sued and were forced to do it. It wasn't because they like were constantly improving. They were constantly getting away with shit. That's why they changed up. All right, those are people making bad business choices. And if you want to think about it, like um, if you were to open up a franchise business, like let's just say chicken. Here we go, it's now the franchise excuse, one of my favorites. Keep up the good work, Biceps. Ah, oh, thank you, Biceps. Appreciate that, JW. Aww. Thank you. Um, yeah, so here he's saying the franchise example. Franchise, and I'm excited to talk to Doug Brooks about this in our interview because Doug Brooks has a background in franchise law, uh, Burger King, things of that nature. And he will explain in the interview we do that in order to become a franchise, you get disclosure. You get to see how many other ones of the thing you're trying to open are in the area. How well do they typically perform? What kind of revenue can you expect? And on and on and on and on. Also, the reason most MLMs charge under $500 total for the opportunity to join is because in the US at least, there's a law where any more than $500, it would count as a franchise, which means that you are subject to that disclosure. MLMs don't want to give this disclosure because if they were forced to give this disclosure, people would read, oh, this actually looks like a horrible fucking investment. And so they wouldn't join. So instead, they charge maybe one or two or three or four hundred dollars and tell you it's going to be the most life changing opportunity. And they tell you this at a time when your life is not going so well. So, you know, moolah. Chick fil A. Okay. You could open up that business. And regardless of how Chick-fil-A does things, you could do things your own way. You could make very poor business choices that would put you out of business. And you wouldn't blame Chick-fil-A because that's not what Chick-fil-A suggests, right? So that's kind of what it's like. Like, And again, whenever you're registering as a member, there's all these things you have to click. Like there's no minimum purchases. I mean, you don't have to buy anything. 
there's no um no need to purchase i'm glad the comments weren't falling for it either it's like sales and business tools so in the movie there's a guy and he's saying like he's spending like a hundred dollars per lead like these email leads and it's set up to make you think like, okay, this guy, to start up in the business, he had to pay $100, then he had to buy $4,000 worth of products, then he had to pay $100 for each uh, email lead that he got, and before you know it, he had spent $10,000, he was so out of money, and he spent all his savings and stuff like, what? That is, I mean, like, he might have done that, and that was super poor business choice, but Herbalife never ever suggests that. That has nothing to do with Herbalife itself. It's just like if you start your own business and you went and spent all this money on some unnecessary like advertisements or unnecessary ways to get clients or something like that. And then when it doesn't work out, you blame that company that you work for or you blame Herbalife. Like Herbalife has nothing to do with that. Okay. So I wanted to dispel some of this stuff. Um, like again, going he has notes. Going back to the idea that Herbalife is this pyramid where I sign on somebody and I convince them to buy $4,000 worth of products to keep in their garage and then the next person does It's actually crazy that these excuses, these rationalizations, oh, it's like a franchise, oh, it's like a car dealership, oh, it's like real estate, oh, well, college is the real scam, oh, well, marriage is the real scam. It's amazing that all of these non-answers, deflections, what about isms on and on and on, uh, actually trick people. And if none of those work, oh, well, don't listen to Marco. He's just doing it to make money on his YouTube channel. Oh, well, da, da, da. Oh, well, you can find negative reviews of anything if you look online. Oh, the internet is a negative place and on and on and on. <sighs> it's the same and it's, all that's really happening is all the money is staying in here and it's no, there's no outside buyers or anything like that. Like Herbalife, like just, we just got our numbers back. 90% of all of our sales, all the sales of products here, 90% of them have gone to customers another another the customer fallacy in most multi-level marketing companies at least all of the ones that i've studied they refer to anyone who doesn't yet meet the qualifications for the first rank on the compensation plan as a customer if you are in the process of trying to get people under you but maybe you only have one and the comp plan requires that you have three or four before you start earning bonuses the company refers to you as a customer. So they show that you are making purchases, but in actuality, you are a distributor. You just don't have enough people under you yet to qualify. This is why in MLMs, you typically don't earn anything on your downline until you have three or four or five of them. In uh, Arbon, uh, Julie Joe explained to me in our interview that you need six people, I believe, to hit the first rank. So this would mean that for the first five people, all the overhead that you would have got is just going to the person above you. It just skips you. So this is another misleading thing. Customer, MLM is all about misusing language, okay? They say the company is the wholesaler who sells to a distributor who makes a retail sale. None of that is true. The truth is the company is the retailer who sells it to the customer who is actually the distributor. The distributors are the customers. The distributors are not salespeople who go and sell the products to an outside market of people who are in search of the product, who demand the product. Those people, people in the real world are perfectly content using Walmart and Amazon for all their skincare and uh, protein powder needs or some other, you know, store, online store in, you know, big box retailer. They're not looking for some guy on Facebook, on Instagram to message, to get an, a link, an affiliate link to his website or go meet up with him in the parking lot to buy a tub of powder. It, it, it's a lie. It's a lie. And the word sales in this case is also a lie. 90% of sales went to customers. Yeah, because you... The distributors are the customers. You just didn't seem to know, you know, in this case, he just doesn't know what the word customers really means in MLM language. So sorry for, sorry for the tangent. Okay, customers, not, not distributors, customers. Okay, so that blows that out of the water right there. Okay, boom, gone. All right, what happened is in the past, and this is the numbers that they fudge there, so, so listen closely. In the past, what would happen is, like even myself, when I would get clients, let's say I had them for just, uh, they've been purchasing. I've seen one of these Herbalife shake shops too, uh, Stephanie, I think in the chat talking about it. 
my ex-girlfriend in the town that she lived in, there was a smoothie place called like, uh, you know, Emily's Smoothies or something like that. It was just a random generic, you know, place. And it turns out that that was a Herbalife front. So, um, which is a real shame. And I don't know what the exact reason Marco. is. Marco! Marco! Oh, It all just makes me so angry. Go to the conference and make a difference, Marco. Thank you so much. That's a huge thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeehaw! It's bull wrangling time. Billions and billions. Let's go. Anna Marie is a real one. Thank you, Anna Marie, for all you do. Appreciate that a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, what was I going to say? Anna Marie got a rich mindset. Yeah, totally. Uh, I, I think I think the reason they're not allowed to advertise it is something to do with if they said it was Herbalife, then that would be them using the company's logos and whatnot. Thus, it would be a franchise, but they don't meet the other criteria for franchise law. I'm going to ask uh, Doug Brooks about that, actually. Um, let me put that in my notes here. The voiceover scared you. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it too loud? I'll have to adjust those volumes. Products from me from two, three months, and they're doing really well, and they love the products. You know, they're product of the product, meaning they're getting results from those products, and they love them. I would allow my clients to sign up technically as distributors, okay? But they didn't want to be distributors. They just wanted the distributor discount, okay? So we would sign them up, and we just, like, call them VIP clients. They were people who did not want to do the business, they didn't come to trainings. They just wanted the distributor discount, okay? Well, that turns out that was 73% of the Herbalife distributors. So when, when Bill Ackman is in that film, he's like spouting out numbers and he's saying like, this amount of people made zero dollars. Okay, so then even you realize that the word distributors is being misused, isn't it? In Herbalife, that's because those people never had the intention to make income. They never went to a training. They never tried to sell anything. But he's going to take those numbers and bulk them all together as distributors. So what Herbalife did was they sent out emails and they said, cool, look, if you come into this distributorship and your sole intention was just to get the products at a discount, never to sell, we would like you to switch over to what's called a preferred member. Now we have a preferred member program. Basically, it's just the people. Yeah, because they got sued and have to do that now who were in it, uh, they were technically distributors for the discount. So that way it segments who is here to do the business and who is here to uh, just consume the products as a customer, right? And it's, think of it just like a, a Costco membership or something, right? That's what's happened. It's not like a Costco membership. And it's cleared up all this stuff. So everything in that uh, document. This new program that they have may be more like a Costco membership actually, but b make no mistake. Signing up as a distributor so that you can get a discount is not like a Costco membership. It's late train, baby. Like it, it's uh, those numbers been blown out of the water. Uh, and this see, like I went up like the leads thing, uh, like Bill Ackman. You know, first off, you gotta understand that dude. He's a hedge fund investor. Like he makes money if Herbalife fails. Again, this is now going for the personal attack. Well, Bill Ackman is just saying bad things about the company so that he can make money. Same thing they say about Marco. Marco just wants to talk bad about these companies because negativity gets more clicks. And uh, if, his, if he's negative in his videos, he'll get more views. And none of his other stuff gets any views. And so he gets paid off the views. So he's just going to say all the bad stuff he can think of. Well, okay. Then why am I not just going out here making slanderous accusations? Why am I actually backing it up with research and logical, rational thinking? So he, it's in his best interest to, for his namesake, for his reputation to try and take down Herbalife. So he's going to try and that's the whole reason why he'll take those numbers and say, this many people aren't making herb, money in Herbalife and this many people are. And he leaves out the fact, the fact that those people never had intentions to make money, but it's playing on your heartstrings. It's making you feel like, wow, these people are being so taken advantage of. And you know, Herbalife goes into Kind of like your heartstrings were played on when you said you were at your lowest point when you joined. Did your not? Did your recruiter not play on your um, heartstrings? You know, poor communities and and takes advantage of them. You guys, the only people who are typically um, looking for an opportunity to make income are people who are in a hard spot. Myself, I was on unemployment five years ago. 
Okay, if, if I was making hundreds of thousands of dollars doing something else, why would I even consider the herb life opportunity? I wouldn't. I needed that. So, of course, they're going to go into it's going to do well in areas where people you don't have to have a college education. You, uh, you know, you don't have to speak a particular language or have gone to some certain school. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past. All that matters is that you love the products and you're willing to uh, talk to people about the products and get them started on the products. That's it. You know, so of course it's going to do well in those areas. Um, and of course, just like any business, there's going to be distributors who try and like find loopholes or try and like. Now here comes the bad apples argument. This guy's checking every box. Like do things dirty. I mean, like you got to think there's tons of companies that the company itself is an amazing company, but they just have some bad egg employees. I right. can't make this shit up. So that's sort of what's happening here. There's some people who have kind of like twisted up the marketing plan, but every time Herbalife finds those little loopholes, they cut them up. They close those loopholes out, all right? So um, my whole intention of making- If it was legitimate in the first place, why would it even have those loopholes to begin with? In this video was to really dispel a lot of those negative beliefs that that video tries to, or that documentary tries to put out. You know, um, like again, that quote was wrong. The numbers they, they twist up are wrong. Uh, the the uh, how much money it costs for you to start up and all this stuff and it's four thousand dollars and it's all this money. You guys, again, I was broke. My friends who know me know I was broke. There was no way I was gonna be able to pay four thousand dollars to start the leads thing. Like that's complete. Like it, it's not necessarily a lie. Okay, that guy probably did that, but that has nothing to do with Herbalife. All right, don't get distracted and let them like pull in these ideas and make you think that that's how Herbalife does things. They don't. Right? That's how those people chose to do it. The nutrition club thing too. God, that dude who's like, he's in Herbalife and he opened up a nutrition club and he sold his car to do it. Like again, poor business choice, but has nothing to do with Herbalife. It was his fault. The Herbalife does not say, hey, this is what you do. You sign on, you pay $100, you buy $4,000 worth of products. Then you go sell your car or use your savings and open up a nutrition club that's actually going to go uh, into the negative and then just try your best to convince other people to do the same. That way you can make, pff, what? Do you guys really think a company would be around for 37 years, be the number one nutrition company in the world if that's how they really did business? It wouldn't last. You're the number one nutrition company only because you're a pyramid scheme, which makes a lot of money, unfortunately, and you claim to be a you know, your products claim to be nutritious products. Thus, through some stretch of the language, you are the number one nutrition company. It is, again, a manipulation of the language. They recently filed a cease and desist with a major medical Instagram celebrity in India, calling them out for their dangerous links of liver disease. Wow. To consumption of their shakes. What up, Mombi? That's crazy, Dave. Mm. All right, these these things like use your mind. That thing is that's completely ridiculous. All right, like and those of you who don't understand how the marketing plan works, I want to touch on one thing too, Meek, uh, regarding the ninety nine percent. I've explained this before, but a lot of people still uh, are. So it's the first time they've heard it when I say it. The ninety nine percent loss rate is widely misunderstood. The ninety nine percent, the ninety nine point six percent failure rate in MLM is not a 99.6% career failure rate. It is an annual failure rate. And believe it or not, the 99.6% failure rate estimate is actually very, very generous and favorable and conservative in, in favor to the MLM. Let's use a simple analogy, a simple made up example where there's a, a new baby MLM that has started recently. I'm the guy who started it. I have, there's a hundred total people. I started it and there's 99 people below. Okay. There's 99 people below. So let's say not, those 99 people lose money. I make money. 1% has made money. Year two, a whole bunch, more than 50% of those 99 people who were below me have left and been replaced by new people. Year two, 99% lose, one makes money. So in the course of one year, 99% have lost. In the course of two years, 198% have lost, actually 199% because the guy on the top is still the same. You get where I'm going with this? If we look at the total number of victims and not the actual percentage, it's 99 in year one. It's 198 by year two. By year three, it's 297. 
396, 495. Meanwhile, each year, the guy at the top was the same. You can, let's multiply this number by 10. Let's say that the people at the top, there's 10 people at the top and the company usually has 1,000 people in it. Or there's 100 people at the top and the company has 10,000 people in it. Or there's 1,000 people in the top, the company has 100,000 people in it. The numbers are the same. The attrition rate is the same. The turnover rate is the same. If I was to take a five-year stretch where this one over 99 example is the truth, we would have one over 495 because over five years, 495 people lose, one made money. That is an actual percentage of 0.002% who made money which is a lot worse than 0.4%. So the 0.4% the is very generous. It makes the MLMs look good to say that only 0.4% of people made money because they only talk about one calendar year. That is only talking about one calendar year. Now, if you really want to think about something scary, consider that big companies like Amway, for example, have been around over 40 years. What, what is that kind of damage? Over 40 years with over 100,000 people. Think about that. Think about how widespread the actual amount of victims is. And we're not even factoring in people who stayed in for 10 years, five years, more than one year, basically. We're not factoring in the Scott Johnsons who spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. We're not factoring in the people who made a lot of money for a long time and then they just eventually stopped finding new people and their downline collapsed. If one person leaves who's high enough, your whole shit collapses. You're no longer eligible. You don't qualify. So again, the more factors you start considering, the more grim the numbers become. So the 99.6% failure rate in MLM is actually the best case scenario when it comes to the way a pyramid scheme is actually designed to work. You could not have these kind of failure rates, failure, you know, today I put out a clip on Instagram. It's even funny to call it a failure rate because it's a success rate. It's a 99.6 annual success rate because it works the way it's designed to work. It's supposed, you're supposed to lose, you know, it worked. It, it's, it's effective. It worked. <laughs> if you made money, you, you, uh, it was broken. So, you know, congrats. If you made money in the MLM, you broke the system, you know? So yes, the 99.6% success rate is the most generous analysis. Okay. Uh, Mombi says 99.7 was Taylor's conservative calculation too. He believed it was closer to 99.9. .9. Yeah. I mean, it's just, do we even need to talk about it if it's in excess of 90 or 95? No, there's no, there's no other industry that's comparable. Uh, I think probably restaurants are one of the most volatile businesses. You know, people are unreliable. Uh, you, re you rely on a lot of people. And so that makes it difficult. You're dealing with things that are, you know, food ingredients go bad. If you don't sell them, you're subject to so many factors. If another restaurant opens up across the street, that's competition. That's money out of your pocket. If there's a global health event and the world shuts down for two years, there, you, there goes your business and on and on and on. And even restaurants don't have nearly as high a failure rate as multi-level marketing. So I find it especially funny when people like this gentleman we're watching now try to make these comparisons and say, oh, it's like a car dealership. Oh, it's like a restaurant. Oh, it's like a franchise. Oh, it's like this. It's like that. No, it's not anything like any of those because none of those are even comparable in their results. So, you know. Sorry for the tangent, but um, I wanted to explain it. Cab Benson says, I'm a food neutral kind of registered dietitian, but I still have concerns over liver health and the health halo they put on those drinks. Like there's a time for all foods, but I wouldn't classify those as nutrient dense and physical health supporting. There you go. Um, I'm reading your guys' comments. 
Confused AF says, I never thought of it this way, and it all makes so it makes it so much more heinous. Yeah, it is really scary. And I will be pressing the FTC about this shit when I go to the conference, so don't worry. I'm not just gonna tell my own story and say, uh, you know, oh, it's bad. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna make people think. Like before you make an assumption based on what this documentary says, at least research how the Herbalife business opportunity works. Like it's funny he says at least research because when you join any MLM, they'll say don't research. I was just watching a bunch of stuff today about Scientology. It's amazing the parallels between Scientology and MLM. And it's because it is a cult. They all rely on the same methods. Oh, well, don't listen to what's out there. You don't know. You know, the media is evil. They're just trying to. All right. I just don't take it as, as their words as facts. It's a documentary, right? Uh, so, like, another one more thing before I cut this video off, because I want to make it short, is, like, there was a... There's this part in the video where all, the, all these Hispanic people are like picketing outside, all right, outside of the Herbalife extravaganza. And here's the deal. I was there. I was at that extravaganza. I was pulling up in a bus and I saw them there on the side of the road next to the Target, right? And it was a really small group of people, but they were really close to the camera. And what it reminded me of is back when I lived in Los Angeles, sometimes to make income, I would go work on music videos, right? And some of them would be low budget, you know, pay like $100 or whatever to do it but the low budget ones didn't, they couldn't afford a lot of extras, right? So what they would do is they'd put us all really close to the camera and there wouldn't be anyone on the outside. Like you guys can't see my hands here. There would be nobody there. They'd put you like right here and here, right? And you'd all fill in. So they only need like 15, 20 people to make it look like there's some rock star jamming out to a, 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 a crowd full of people, right? That's exactly what they were doing there. And I remember being like, hmm, that's It's just movie magic, y'all. Don't believe it. Interesting. And I never saw that, that footage or anything until this documentary. I was like, that's where the, what they were doing. They put it real close to the camera and made it look like there was all these people out there picketing. You know what? And they're picketing about saying Herbalife is taking advantage of those people. No, 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 no. Everything that they claim, are, those aren't even Herbalife business practices, okay? Those are just things that some people had done that Herbalife has nipped those things in the butt. All right. So uh, on that note, hopefully I've covered just about everything that's in that. If you guys have any questions, like comment below. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. You know about myself. I've been in the company for five years now. Um, again, started on unemployment, started on the products right away because I saw other people getting incredible results. Uh, dropped my body fat four percent over time. Kept taking the products, giving my body good nutrition, letting me gain fifteen pounds. Like I felt incredible. Started sharing it with my friends and family. Uh, and you know what? I've been able to build a team of people who are so grateful because just like me, when I was on unemployment, I was looking for something. And this company it has worked for me. It doesn't work for everyone because not everyone's willing to do hard work. You know, it's not like this is a company where you can just sign up and just. Uh, receive a bunch of income and that's another thing I'll touch on that before I close this out that video makes people believe like it says you've got to earn you've got to keep buying products buying into the company is what it says buying into the company and if you want to receive your your checks okay here's the reason why listen closely in order to receive your royalty check we used to have to do something called a 10 customer form okay you would fill out your 10 customer form every month that proves that you yourself are getting clients you're you're selling products so that way there's a this it's a positive loophole so that way you can't just expect to sign people up in Herbalife and sit back and just be like oh, I'm gonna collect this money like they make you think no the only way you can collect your check the only way Herbalife will give you your check is if you yourself great. are working the business great point why not review hard work Hispanics no hard work it's true the Bro, in, I'm in Canada, right? We don't have so many Hispanic people, but we have a lot of Filipino people. And Filipino people are the hardest working people I've ever seen. And Hispanic people. My best friend who joined World Financial Group, he was such a hard worker and his family was hardworking. His dad did uh, drywall, drywalling for like uh, houses under construction. And dude, just immigrants in general work fucking hard, okay? If the... Hispanic population is your biggest demographic in your MLM company. You really can't say that they didn't work hard enough. They fucking work hard. They work hard. You're getting clients. You're 
getting new clients and all this stuff. All right, so um, just to dispel the things, that the crazy ideas that they'll have you believe in that, I needed to make this video. So um, if you guys agree, disagree, or, or if you just have questions, again, just comment below. I'm more than happy to answer it. Yeah, I'm at 16 minutes right now, so I'm going to close this out. You guys have an amazing, powerful day, and I'll see you soon. Peace. We would in fact not see him soon because he made this video five years ago and has never uploaded again since. So, and it was his most viewed video. So good stuff. Good stuff. Anywho, y'all, you know, I want to talk about this last thing. The thing that I'm struggling with most regarding this MLM conference is that I have so much I want to say. There's so much I can go into. I've been writing, I think I have about 3,000 words right now in my document that I'm trying to refine down to. Like, I want it to be long enough to encapsulate a bunch of important things, but I, would, I don't want it to be so long that it's overwhelming and we can't actually talk about any one of the things. So I'm sort of writing down everything I think is important to talk about, and then I'm going to have to, you know, kill my children figuratively and whittle down the talking points to only the most important things. It's really tough. Uh, you guys have seen on these streams, I can go on, I could go on all day explaining things like the 99% failure rate, why that's, why that needs more explanation, why these comparisons between direct selling and franchising and, uh, the schooling system and marriage and all these are false going into the cult aspects of it, which is something I'm not even going to touch, I'm not even going to touch it. The control of information, how they constantly sue, you know, they're very litigious. They sue people. They sue anti-MLM creators. They send cease and desist letters. They educate their uh, distributors about why that person is not reputable. You shouldn't listen to them and on and on and on and on. There's so much and it's really tough. Yeah. I'm, I'm only talking about the tool scam, the tool scam and lack of retail sales. Thank you, Megan. So, um, I think the thing that I, the things that I want to, well, I don't want to spoil it cause I don't know who's watching, but you guys will see it. I'm working very hard on it. I probably have not worked this hard on a piece of writing maybe ever. I think the most, the last time I focused like this and, and wrote something out like this and really tried to formulate a speech, I didn't even go, I didn't even. I wasn't even this meticulous when I was doing stand-up comedy. I think the last time I did something like this was probably two years ago when I was scripting uh, my last, actually, you know what? Not two years ago, a year, a year ago when I was finishing up my World Financial Group Part 3 video and doing all that scripting. Um, there was a lot of work for that, but it's been a while and, you know, I, I really want to provide something of value because it's a rare... It's a rare opportunity, rather it's an opportunity I haven't had yet. So um, even if you're not watching the conference, you're not supporting it, um, I hope that you will watch my video, like of my clip. I'm gonna post my own speech, my own talk as part, like as a video on my channel taken from the conference. I hope that uh, everybody will support that even if they didn't support the overall conference as a whole. So yeah, Scott and Peter is watching. I do think it's important as well, NPAS, to press the FTC. Appreciate you, Meek. I'm going to definitely do that. Um, if they don't victim blame, then they'd have to admit fault. So true. So true, frankly. A lot of bad people, bad hombres. They're killers. They're drug dealers. They're rapists. All right. Um, do we have more streams before I go? Before I go to... Yeah, I can't wait to get that email tomorrow, Michelle. Thank you, Kat. She says, I'm looking forward to watching your video. Thank you, Kat Benson. Um, I registered but didn't get an email. Okay. When are you making anti-MLM stickers? Just want to keep distributors away. I got a lot of merch I need to do. I got a lot of merch I need to do. Okay, so I leave in exactly one week. I actually think my flight is at nighttime. So you know what would be really cool 
is if I did a stream right like before my flight, like the night of my flight. I think I will do that actually. Tire myself out. Hopefully, I'll be able to sleep on the plane. I've never slept on a plane, but who knows? Maybe the, you know, there's a first for everything. Um, but we have this upcoming Wednesday. We have Friday and we have Saturday. So if you want to support, you know, I'm still trying to still trying to raise the money for that videographer flight, hotel, Uber, food, etc. All the stuff that you heard Scott and Peter uh, make fun of me for asking for help with. I am asking for help. Um, and I have no shame about it. You know, I'm going to do a good thing. I'm going to do a thing that helps people. And I know you guys are passionate about helping further that goal too. So appreciate you guys just watching, thumbs up in the stream. If you're watching this back on replay tomorrow or another day, um, you know, you can hit that Streamlabs whenever that Patreon, I got a new multi-level misery, great episode coming out tomorrow on Patreon with a guy who was in world financial group. It's coming out publicly on Monday. I have clips, vertical clips scheduled to come out for the next uh, almost week. And uh, yeah, so appreciate you guys. Thank you, Amber. Appreciate that. You give me your Starbucks money for the cause. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mombi. Really appreciate it. We need a photo including all of the Always Marco lore villains. So true. So true. So true. Appreciate y'all. Love you guys. Do not do drugs. Please. Oh, and yeah, and one last thing, too, about Scott, and jo Scott Johnson and Peter Mingles. I addressed almost every single one of their accusations against me except the drug dealer one. What I will say is this. People go through hard times in their life, and sometimes people do desperate things because of those hard times. And I, for one, am not the type to judge somebody because of mistakes they made or things they did out of desperation when they were 20 or 21 years old. So, you know, I believe that you can be a good person who does a bad thing. You can be a bad person who does a good thing. It's not an all encapsulating judgment of you as a human being. You know, when my life is over and I'm an old man, hopefully, we can look back at all the things I've done in my life and decide whether my impact on this world has been net positive or net negative. So that's what I'll say about that. Appreciate y'all. Peace out. Marco. Marco. Do you like me? <laughs>